off the top-ranked team in eight-man Division One, moved ahead in the playoffs with a chance now to take a little bit back from Burlingame as they made the trip down here, like you said, from up north, uh, starting a little bit earlier tonight, but it's a beautiful night. It's about 70 degrees. The wind's blowing a little bit out of the south. Shouldn't be a factor. Everything is in favor of the Indians having a good night weather-wise and really shouldn't be anything stopping them from having a good game tonight. Osborne last week comes to town. The Indians score the final 27 points unanswered in the game to take control of that game. Showed a lot of heart and desire in that game. Two turnovers, two costly turnovers in the first half. Had the Indians behind 16 to nothing. Scored right before the halftime to close the score to 16 and out to 8. Burlingame came out in the third quarter to open and drive. Scored on a hook and ladder. Indians had them third and long, scored on the hook and ladder, so right off the bat, Indians was down from 16, but from then on, it was all Indians the rest of the way. Showed a lot of heart and desire in the second half of that game to knock off the defending state champs. Burlingame comes in undefeated on the year, pretty much the favor all year long, the number one seed in Division 8-man one. Uh, a lot of talent on that team. Indians know all about them, but... Not really much to compare. A Berlin game, not near the road trip as Osborne last week. Osborne with a 320-mile road trip to St. Yeah. Paul last week. Berlin game just comes up from up by Topeka. Uh, well, confident coming to St. Paul and play, but the Indians, too, uh, luck of the draw, two home games in a row. I apologize for being wrong last week. I didn't realize that the formula changed from week to week as far as who hosted east or west, and it turns out, it was the sub-state round was the furthest East team host, and that happens to be our Indians of St. Paul. So here we are back in home ground, Mike. Yeah, it should be a, a good opportunity for the Indians to really take advantage of some things. In a Burling game, you talked about being 11-0. and However, they're showing a few chinks in their armor here late in the season, which is a good news thing for St. Paul. Burling game allowed only 20 points throughout the first nine games of the season. However, over the last two games, they've allowed 64 points. They've also lost one of their... Uh, premier players in Dalton Norling to an injury. Hate to hear about any any kid getting injured, especially something that keeps him from playing. Uh, scoring, I should take that back, I should say. It's Dalton scoring. But he did have a knee injury, and so I think he's out for the game tonight. Indians will be looking to capitalize on that and take a little bit of advantage. Bad news for the Indians. They do have a step-up uh, backup quarterback by the name uh, of Giffen. Giffen. Montana, Montana Giffen. Giffen has stepped in the last week and played for Sporling. Montana Giffen threw for 200 yards and two touchdowns last week against West Elk. So apparently they still have some strength at the quarterback position. So the Indians still going to have their hands full. This is a really good-looking Burling game team. they got a lot of players on the roster. Got some pretty good size on them. Obviously, you come through here at 11-0 and after the showing they had last year. A lot of the same names on the roster that we saw here last year in that 58-12 defeat. So we'll look forward to the Indians coming out of here with a, a really good chance, though, especially with the confidence they gained last week coming down from being behind in the middle of the third quarter, fighting themselves back with 27 unanswered points against Osborne especially. Really something to build their confidence coming into the game tonight. You bet. We're listening. You're listening to the Richie's pregame show here, St. Paul Indian football, week before Thanksgiving as they host Burlingame in a sub-state, chan- or a sub-state game here at St. Paul. Next week, the winner of this game advances to the state championship game at Newton at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I know the Indians would love to try to get back to a state championship game. It's been a while since they've been there, but they've advanced into the third round of the playoffs this week, and here we are on our home turf, and we got a chance to move on. Yeah, Indians got their work cut out for them, though. There's not going to be any give, and to give up in this Burlingame team. You know, look forward, we'll talk a little bit later after the break about some of the key points of the game for each side, but I'll speak of it now. One of the things that's interesting about this game, Alejandro Mate for St. Paul has been a key in their kicking special teams game, being able to kick the ball out of the end zone on most of his occasions when he's had a chance to kick off, and that's really been an advantage for St. Paul to pin the other team deep in their own territory, not giving up any field position at all off the kickoff. On the other side of the field for Burling game, they also have an exchange student from Portugal. You'll hear us try to pronounce his name. It's Caldas is his last name, and uh, we'll work on maybe trying his first name uh, as we go through the game. But anyway, being from Portugal, he's also pretty effective as a kicker. He's had most of his kicks go out of the end zone as well for touchbacks, so it's really going to be a field position game tonight as we move forward. Yes, it is, and Monte's been a big part of this Indian success this year with two field goals of the year, one a central burden in the playoffs, and then last week a very important field goal, 27-yard field goal, giving the Indians an 11-point lead against Osborne, so... Uh, kicking was an important part, and the advantage is we're going to call it null tonight on the kicking game because 
uh, watching warm up. Their uh, burning game is lined up for uh, field goals also. And uh, looking at the kickoff, he was kicking into the end zone uh, co- uh, constantly. The Indians are going to have to play mistake free tonight. Last week, they got away with having a couple turnovers in that first half and was able to come back from it. But you're not going to get away with that very often when it comes to this stage into the playoffs. We're going to be back after this two-minute break. You're listen, listening to the Richie St. Paul Indian pregame show. We'll be right back after this two-minute break. You're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. St. Paul Tire and Lube, locally owned and operated, offers the small town convenience you love without the big city prices. They offer free pickup and drop off in St. Paul, so you're not left stranded while your vehicle is in the shop. They offer tire repair and also offer oil change and new tires. When you find yourself in need of new tires or an oil change and need to keep going, visit with St. Paul Tire and Lube, 620-449-2323. St. Paul Tire and Lube, proud supporters of the St. Paul Indians. Exchange Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of the St. Paul Indians. Give us a call, visit our website, or stop in to let us do the comparison shopping for you and get a free no-obligation quote. Offering all types of insurance, including auto, motorcycle, home, farm, crop, watercraft, life, and health, Medicare supplements, and all lines of commercial or business insurance. Serving the four-state area since 1964, Exchange Insurance in St. Paul is here to provide you with what you need, want, and should expect from your insurance agency. Richie's Drug Store in Erie has been serving the area since 1883 with a strong belief in providing customized care and doing more than just filling prescriptions. Pharmacist Morgan Bunton is now taking appointments for free consultations and sign-up assistance for Medicare Part D prescription plans that will fit your needs. Open enrollment begins October 15th and ends December 7th. Even if you're in a current plan, let Richie's help you determine if there's a better plan to cover your unique needs and prescriptions. Call or stop by Richie's today on the corner of State and Maine in Erie. Farmers Bank is a full-service bank with small-town personal attention. They know you by name and are always glad to help you out. Offering 24-hour ATM and three banking locations in St. Paul, Walnut, and Hepler, Farmers Bank, member FDIC, is proud to help support the success that a small community can achieve with teamwork and determination. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. We've got about 13 and a half minutes until kickoff. We haven't done the coin toss yet. Nice crowd on hand by the Indians and by Burlingame. They traveled well, not having a too long a road trip as everybody files in. Exciting time in the week or uh, week coming up into St. Paul after the victory against Osborne in that sectional game last week. They got a a nice uh, slideshow going on in the west end zone of past history and of the Indian success in football. Indians come in with three state championships under the belt, looking to get back to another state title game, but they got a tough road to hoe here tonight. Yeah, they're going to have their work cut out for them, but they've proven that they can come back and, and fight their way from behind, which is really a boost. We saw some struggles early on in the season with them getting down on themselves a little bit and kind of getting into their own heads. I think they've overcome that. A lot of that credit goes to Coach Watcher for doing such a good job coaching the Indians up and keeping them, you know, high in spirits. A lot of times, you know, a lot of this game is not only physical but mental, and I think the Indians are in a good place coming into this game right where they should be here in the playoffs. They know what's on the line, and they know the value. You've got a good crowd that turned out here, a lot of alumni that have played in the past, and I think the whole town's kind of buzzing now with the chance of the Indians driving this deep into the playoffs with an opportunity here, and everyone's behind them. I think they can feel that out on the field. Indians coming off of a great defensive performance, I thought, last week. Their best of the year, as it's just been getting stronger the last couple games. Honestly, the first round of Central uh, Burden, the Indians handled Central Burden pretty well. Full game, but last week, Osborne, they knew they'd have their hands full. In eight-man football, a lot of times it comes down to matchup. The Indians matched up pretty well against Osborne. They had a lot of athletes, but so did St. Paul, and they did an excellent job of stopping the uh, Hollowell, Hollowell brothers. As long, long as well as Spores, I believe was his name last week. Either way, Indians defense did a good job of containing their potent running game. And once the Indians start getting momentum, it really seemed to feed the defense yeah, in that have, second half. They've had a lot of luck offensively. With uh, Last week there wasn't much of the, the big play factor, but the big play's been there for them throughout the season. They seem to go back to basics somewhat last week, not quite throw the ball as much as they had 
earlier in the season, stuck more to the running game and kind of that read option that Braven Bourne runs so well. However, when he did get a chance to throw the ball last week, he threw for three touchdown passes. So Braven Bourne really having a good season, and hopefully he'll be able to keep that up tonight as he's the leader of the Indians from the quarterback position. Also count a lot on Adam Albertini coming out of the backfield. Adam really took up, he had a little bit of an injury problem a couple of games ago. Coach Watrick set him out, gave him a little time to heal, which really was helpful. Adam's got 862 yards as of last week on the season with 16 rushing touchdowns. So he's really a threat, but not only in the backfield, he's also a threat on special teams with his abilities on the kick return. If he can get the ball in his hands, if the kicker for Burlingame can kick one a little short, give Adam a chance to return it, he is always a threat to score because he's so fast, he's so shifty, and he's so hard to catch that when you get your hands on him, doesn't necessarily mean you got him because he's kind of greasy and and can slip out of your hand, and he's off and running again. So he's really a good weapon both on special teams and offense. That front, Adam Albert, Anthony Albertini, Adam's older brother, the senior, held down that front line for St. Paul all year. He's helped in there with, by Kobe Spielbush, and Grant Hutcherson has played a good job at center. And who's the other lineman for the Indians besides Grant, Kobe? And off the top of my head, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Hunter Pullman? Hunter Pullman. And Pullman's so they've done a senior. good job up front blocking for the guy, those guys. Colin Carlson come out of the backfield as a fullback. Not only can he block for Adam Albertini in the tailback position, Colin's shown a couple bursts of speeds. When he breaks through that line, hits that second level, he's really been able to take off and make some big plays himself. Caleb Pecka rounds out that line at left tight end. Pecka with a great game. Him and Bourne last week. Bourne and Pecka looked up twice in real critical situation. A couple fourth downs, fourth and 15 from the Indians, or excuse me, from the Osborne 35 were. <laughs> The reason I'm not the coach, I might have punted it in that situation, but we go for it, and Pekka scores a 35-yard touchdown, a beautiful catch and pass. But uh, his best catch of the night and best pass and catch of the night happened in the west end zone. I'm sure by now everybody's seen the pictures on the Internet. And from here, it's clear across the field on the west end from where we sit in the crow's nest, and we had the perfect angle for it, and it looked like that was going to go just right off his fingertips, and that was pretty dang close to what happened, only it went right on his fingertips, and somehow he reeled that ball in. Yeah, Caleb's shown a really strong set of hands and a soft set of hands, be able to reel some of those passes in that you think he's going to miss, and he's helped out, too, with another weapon as a receiver, senior Brendan Doherty, who's really come on strong also late in the season. He's a big target, tall target, going to have some competition on the other side with six foot seven. Uh, how to sp- the six foot seven kid, I'll tell you his name in a minute when I find it on the roster for Berlin game. We're going to have to get adjusted to these new names. But uh, uh, Brendan Doherty done a good job with the height advantage that he's had so far this year at the receiver position. I'm sorry, Mike. I could help you out, but I was staring down the crowd. I see Big Mike sure Cook down there. He's one of the state champs returning. Number that's, what I mean. that's, a lot of, that's what I've been looking at, too. So first, to first scroll on the uh, highlight reel is old number 55 on there, Big Mike Pope. He comes off the state championship game, so a lot of alumni in town tonight, a lot of excitement in town tonight. And hope they can cheer the Indians on to a victory here as we're winding down here. There's about eight minutes. Everybody lining up for the national anthem, so we're going to take a two-minute break while we wait for the national anthem. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Jerry and Kevin Winter, along with the entire crew at KW Trucking, are proud to bring you this broadcast of the St. Paul Indians. KW Trucking specializes in heavy equipment and heavy truck repair, late model rebuilding, and body work from large trucks down to cars. They also have a full-service machine shop and a great selection of both used cars and trucks. See Jerry or Kevin at KW Trucking or call 449-2763. Prairie Mission Retirement Village in St. Paul provides services to people in their retirement years. Prairie Mission meets a wide range of needs from health care to assisted living and independent living apartments to elderly daycare services, including transportation. With our 7 to 7 dining, residents get up when they desire, eat when and what they want, and continue to live a full and happy life. Your family deserves the best in retirement care, so give Prairie Mission Retirement Village a call today for more information at 620-449-2400 or visit them at 242 Carroll Street in St. Paul. Hi, I'm Kendall Gammon. You may know me as a Kansas City Chief, but I'm also a proud graduate of Pittsburgh State University. Pittsburgh State offers more than 200 degree programs, small class sizes, and tuition so affordable, it earned Pittsburgh State a top 10 ranking on Washington Monthly's Collegiate Best Bang for Your Buck list. But don't take my word for it. Visit Pittsburgh State and see why there's nothing like being a gorilla. Learn more at pittstate.edu slash ba gorilla. 
The Exchange State Bank is proud to be a member of the St. Paul community. The Exchange State Bank has served the area since 1914 and is committed to go the distance for you. A full-service bank, they offer savings, checking accounts, loan certificates of deposit, and more. They also offer competitive rates on loans and investments, all while giving you the kind of personal service you won't find at bigger institutions. Visit with Bob Conifer at Exchange State Bank in St. Paul, member FDIC, proud sponsor of the St. Paul Indians. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. One. So welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul as we get set for kickoff about five minutes on the clock. A lot of excitement. Mike, I ain't ever called a sub-state football game before. And I really haven't ever called a state championship game, but I'd like to have the chance to do that too, wouldn't you? It'd be nice to get a chance to do that. So the good news is if we haven't done it before, we can't do any worse than we did the last time. So <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, St. Paul comes in with just one loss on the year to West Elk earlier in the season, about midway through the season. St. Paul comes in as the number two seed in District one, so that puts them on the road on the opening round where they went to Central Burden. They won that game quite handily, and then gets to come back home and play the defending state champ Osborne, who the Indians showed a lot of heart and guts and great defense, and won that game by 11 points. Took the lead in the fourth quarter and never relinquished it. And tonight, tough task ahead of them. Berlin game, number one seed. And eight-man won undefeated on the year. So we'll see how the Indians can match up against Burling Game, see if we can get off to a good start offensively and defensively here tonight. Mike, you got start lineups for us? I'll uh, give you a Burling Game starting lineup. They're being introduced on the field right now. They'll be led by number 10, the junior quarterback, Montana Giffen. He's held up with the running back. Her backed up with running back number four, Seth Greenwood. Greenwood's a 5'11 junior, 150 pounds. Number five, Colton Noonan. is a wide receiver, a senior, 5'9", 150 pounds. Number 20, Caden Music is a wide receiver, senior, 6'7", 193 pounds. So he'll be a challenge for Doherty. Number, number 32, Tristan Lee. Defensive end and a guard, a senior, 6'2", six foot, six foot 245 pounds. Dylan Brown is an offensive guard. He's a senior, six foot one, two hundred and thirty pounds. Number seventy six, Keller Sisrud, is the nose guard for Burling Game. The six foot two junior, two hundred and sixty five pounds, and rounding out the lineup for Burling Game tonight is number eighty five, Zach Herrick, who you remember from last year did some damage from the tight end position. Zach's a senior, six foot and one hundred and ninety pounds for the Burling Game Bearcats. And for the St. Paul Indians, it's quite simple. There's eight positions on the field. There's eight seniors on the team, and that's who it is. It's number four, Caleb Pecca, the senior. Number sixty six, Anthony Albertini. Number five, Brendan Doherty. Number twelve, Joseph Hess. Our quarterback, Raven Bourne, Caleb Pecca, and Kobe Spielbush is rounds out the starters for the Indians at St. Paul as we have not had the coin toss yet, so that's about the only where they may have had it. But uh, they're going to go out to midfield here and uh, tell who's going to be the open and who's going to receive and who's going to kick or defer or whatever they so choose. The wind is out of the south, blowing pretty good. It's been a windy day out of the south. That's going to be a crosswind across the field from south and north as the St. Paul field lays east and west. So look for that to be a factor. Uh, kind of protected here in the middle of town, so the treetops moving a lot, but hopefully down on the field it isn't quite so bad. Yeah, with that crosswind, it'd be a factor going both directions for both teams, so maybe not so much as an advantage as it is if it's blowing up and down the field and you have to switch off every quarter and have the wind in your face. So hopefully if it is a factor, they'll be able to make some adjustments for that crosswind, but it is blowing pretty stiff. The flag pretty much almost straight out here down on the bleachers, the flag on the flagpole. Not so much, so it could be swirling around a little bit, maybe out in that field. As the seniors take center field, and you got to notice that scoring for the Bearcats is also out there, uh, torn ACL back to back two years in a row. You got to feel for that young man. If you've ever had a kid go through an ACL surgery, you don't ever want to see that happen to anyone. Right. He's almost a year to the date, I think a little short of a year, so uh, hopefully he uh, he knows that he's got a long life ahead of him. Football is just a small portion of it, so we wish him all the luck in the world as both teams take center field and the coin toss is up as they congratulate one another look for the wind to be a factor as i said it is blowing it's warm tonight not not hot not cold 70 degrees today in the 60s probably a kickoff here so a nice breeze to cool both sets of players down bearcats may be just a little bit deeper than the indians so conditioning shouldn't be a factor coming this time of the year bearcats have won the toss and deferred so the indians will take the opening kick in the west end zone the uh Bearcats will be kicking from east to west. 
I want to thank everybody for listening to our Richie's pregame show. Our title sponsor is Farmers Bank, and our kickoff sponsor, Styles Fitness and More, as we get set to receive the opening kickoff in this game as both teams line up, finish getting loosened up, and get ready to play some football here, Mike. Yes, it's going to be fun to watch. Everybody's excited. Big crowd from Burlingame. They've got people lined up all the way from goal line to goal line, about two or three deep, plus the bleachers are full on the opposite side of the field. Same story for St. Paul, a lot more bleachers, not so many lawn chairs, but goal line to goal line, and about eight rows deep, it's all St. Paul Indian fans, so it's going to be a lot of excitement in the stands, there should be a lot of noise from the crowd, it's just a perfect night for football, it's going to be a lot of fun. I can tell you what, Mike, I'm excited, I'm ready to get going, and hopefully the Indians can put together a good hand, a good game here, they're going to have their hands full against this very good burning game team. Coach Watrick has the team huddled up around him, it'll be the kickoff return team, we'll see... Uh, what, Caldas? Caldas? Caldas. We'll see what he can do here on the kickoff. we got Alejandro Mate's name down. But... Yeah, I know we had a lot of practice with him. We're going to have to get adjusted, so bear with us a little bit as we go through. Up. Usually the yeah. color man's supposed to know three or four languages. Well, and you know what? I Portuguese. know about four other ones, but I don't know Portuguese, <laughs> so I don't know what, exactly how to pronounce that. But hey, we really thank everybody for listening. Listen to us last week and listening this week. I know there's probably a few more of you Indian fans that couldn't make the long road trip home, but we want to welcome you in. Hopefully Mike and I can bring you a good game here tonight. Hopefully the Indian boys can bring you a good game. We know they're going to give you everything they got, win or lose. So we're going to get... Set to kick off as Paul Dawes has the football in his hand. And, folks, we're getting ready to go here with the Styles Fitness and More kickoff. And Adam Albertini is back deep for the Indians. As the refs take all their positions on the field, everybody looks around, counts head, checks equipment. Here we go. Set state playoff game. Burling game and St. Paul fixing to get underway right now. A big run and kickoff going to be a returnable kick for Albertini. Takes it about the five. Up the middle he goes. Right up the middle he goes. Cuts to the left. And he's going to be wrapped up about the 20-yard line. So nice return. Indians will have it. First and 10 from their own 20. Not bad field position for the Indians now. It gets settled in here on offense. Sometimes it takes a, bit, a drive or two or at least a play or two to get those nerves worked out of your system, especially in a high-profile, exciting game like the atmosphere is tonight. So, Indians' key right now is going to be not make any mental mistakes early on and, and not give off Burlingame any opportunity. Front three of Burlingame is just huge. Tristan Lee at the right defensive end position, 265 pounds. You don't see that very often in eight-man no. football. Look for him to crash down. I formation, Carl's a fullback. Albertini a tailback. Hand off to Albertini right off the gut. It's going to be a short game on the play. It's going to be a gain of about two on the play. It's going to bring up second down and eight. We're going to give, it, we're going to give him a gain of three. Second and seven. Ball is about the 23-yard line. 11:38, just underway here in the first quarter. St. Paul versus Burlingame in a sub-state game. Up to the line of scrimmage comes Graven Bourne. Up under Grant Hutcherson, who is the center. Carlson at fullback. Albertini at tailback. Here's the snap. This time it's Carlson. No, Graven Bourne tries to keep it. Right up the middle is going to be pushed backwards. Short gain on the play. Gain of only one or maybe two. Ball advances. Going to bring up a big third down and five here. On the first series of the game for the Indians. Brendan Doherty makes his way into the ball game as Pullman comes out. Bourne comes in from the sideline with the play. Third down and a long five. Nose of the football is just short of the 25-yard line. Need to get right to the 30 for a first down. Doherty splits wide to the left. In the shotgun is Bourne. Albertini is set to his right. Here comes the snap. It's a good snap. Back to pass. It is Bourne looking for Doherty on the out over his head and falls incomplete. Excuse me, it was intended for Pekka. Doherty was behind the coverage, wide open. Nobody was in 10 yards from him, but Bourne missed him. It was a called out play, so it's a quick three and out for the Indians to start this ball game. A lot of pressure by Burlingame on Bourne. Line's going to have their hands full with that front defensive line of Burlingame. 32, Tristan Lee leads the team with 126 tackles on the year, so he's going to be a handful. Kirby Spielbush back to punt. Can't see who that is back deep. Number straight cross on it. He gets it off. He kicks it to the sideline. It goes out of bounds. Not a great punt as it goes out of bounds as they're going to mark it about you know, walking past the 30 up towards the 35, and it does go out of bounds at midfield. So not a good punt by Spielbush. 20-yard punt. 15-yard punt, as a matter of fact. Burling game is going to start with excellent field position to start this ball game. 
We're going to start in their own territory, but not by much, at their own 38. They call defense got an opportunity to make a stand here. Giffen in the shotgun by himself, two receivers wide to the right, one to the left. In the shotgun, Giffen sits alone. Here's shotgun staff. Motion from right to left. Fakes the handoff. going to throw it right down the middle, and it's caught as he gets behind. Is number 85 right off the start, and there it is, Herrick with a nice catch from Giffen. Herrick taking that height advantage over the defensive back there, and they just reached up over his head and brought that ball down. Herrick comes from that left tight end position, got wide open on Spielbush, not wide open, but open on Spielbush, reels it in, was behind the coverage, first and 10, ball about the 15-yard line into territory quickly. Indians defense tested early here. Giffen comes up, single back set behind him is Greenwood. Greenwood coming off a five-touchdown game last week. Giffen in the pistol. Greenwood set behind him. Now motion is Noonan. Hand off to Giffen. He's wrapped up quick as Spielbush and Anthony Albertini in there. Nowhere to go. He's going to lose about a yard. He's going to bring up second down and 12. Nowhere to go that time for Greenwood. And as I actually lost about a yard. We're going to call it a loss of two. Second down and 12. Now the ball backs up. To the 14-yard line. Giffen in the shotgun. One receiver wide to the right. Two to the left this time is Noonan and Greenwood. Motion from right to left. It's going to be a reverse to Noonan trying to get around. No hold call there on Hutcherson as he's going to be chopped down as he rolls down. Not much gain on the play. No gain. It's a good job by the Indians defense. A little razzle-dazzle on the end around to Noonan. And it's going to bring up, uh, it's going to be a, about a loss of a one. We're going to call it third and 13. Each defense tries to settle in here on the night. A big third and 13 for the Bearcats. Greenwood set to the right in the pistol besides Giffen, sets behind his center. Here comes the snap. Now uh, Giffen, Gr- Greenwood goes in motion. It's going to be a flag on the play, and it's going to be a false start against the Bearcats. They're going to push him back five yards. we got Giffen and Greenwood. Got too many G's on the field for me. I think turnovers, uh, penalties, and middle errors are going to be the three biggest keys for both teams tonight, Dan. Burlingame come in here a nine-and-a-half point favorite according to the Topeka Capital Journal's computer who figures winning and rec- winning loss records of both teams as well as opponents. So a nine-point spread in an eight-man game is not much. You about call that a coin toss, so it's going to come down to mistakes. Third and 17. Ball now backed up close to the 20-yard line. In the shotgun is Giffen, set to his left is Greenwood. He's back to pass, looking to his left, now down the middle, throws it up high, a lot of touching going on down there. It falls incomplete as Bourne was in on the coverage. I said a lot of hands going on as Music was using his hands against Bourne with a little push off. It falls incomplete, so it's going to bring out fourth down and 17. A big fourth down coming up for the Indian defense. A little concern there. Bourne was trying to get his hands up in the air in front of the receiver. Almost forgot to turn his head around and look for the ball. A lot of hand fighting going on down the field, trying to make some space for each other. Fourth down and 17 for the Bearcats here in their opening possession of the ball game. The Indians was three and out on their opening possession. Greenwood and Noonan splits wide to the left. And Music splits wide to the left. Or left. Back to pass. Going to the left-hand side again. Same exact play. A little push-off on board. The touchdown. No call made. Because that time, he made a little room for himself, and no flag, touchdown, Bearcats. Same exact play, two times in a row. Bourne had his hand up that time. That was music again. Music does a good job of taking his right arm and making a little room against that D-back. No call on the field, so touchdown stands as they line up for an extra point. Chavez lines up for the extra point. Here's a snap, holds down, and it is no good. Off to the right, so 6 to nothing is the lead for the Bearcats. 8-17 left to go here in the first quarter. Indians defense, they've had a lot of trouble with that in this, this year. They've had their opponents fourth and long several times this year, and a lot of times it's been their Achilles heel 
giving up a big play. And again, that's what it was, fourth and 17, and a hookup between Giffen and Music on the play for the touchdown pass. Six to nothing, Bearcats lead early on in this ballgame. We'll stick around here for the Styles Fitness and more kickoff sponsor. Let's see if the Indians offense can get on track here with their second possession of the game. Unable to do much in their first possession. Defensive line was getting a little bit of pressure on Giffen there. That's a good sign that early on while the line's fresh, they're able to at least penetrate back there and put a little heat on him. Not enough to keep him from throwing that pass, but as the game wears on, that offensive line starts to get tired and that defensive push is going to be more and more important. Height advantage for Music on Bourne. That's one reason he got open. He's a tall, tall statured kid. As Cold Oz has the ball teed up for our style fitness and more kickoff. Adam Albertini back deep for the Indians. And his running kick is on its way. It's going to be a driving kick into the end zone. It's going to be a touchback. So the Indians will start first and 10 from their own 15. Start first and 10 from their own 15 yard line. See if the Indians' offense can get more on track on the second series of the game. Settled in, got the nerves out of the way, got a few hits in the way. Uh, Bearcats lead 6 to nothing early on here in the first quarter. 8-17 left to go in the first. Bearcats not afraid to throw the ball down the field the first drive of the game, trying to take advantage of that St. Paul defensive backfield, which has played a lot better in the last few games. And hopefully that's just some early excitement on the part of the D-backs. The coverage wasn't really bad. It's just like you said, the height advantage over Bourne was really the difference there. The Indians line up, split two receivers wide to the left. Albertini goes to the left. Now Pekka goes wide to the right. Now Albertini comes to the right. Two receivers wide to the right. Single back set is Carlson behind Bourne, who's under center. This time Bourne keeps it off the left-hand side. Got a little runner room on first down. Cuts back to the middle. Still looks like a busted play, but Bourne, quick actions, went to the left side, just Went straight up the field, which you're supposed to do on a busted play, and it's going to be a first down for the Indians. A ball spotted right at the 25-yard line, so a 10-yard carry for Bourne. Went to the weak side that time, away from the split formation to the right. nice thing about Bourne is he thinks fast enough out there that it's a play. If he can see that it's a busted play, he really reacts quickly to that and tries to make something out of it. Tough Bearcat defense here. A lot of size up front. Holy cow, are they big at that nose guard and defensive end position. Doherty splits wide to the left as well as Pekka and Albertini. Born in the shotgun by himself. Now motion from right to left, left to right. Excuse me, Born's going to keep it. Up the middle he goes. going to have a one or two yard gain on the play. As Pekka kind of had to hesitate to get out of the way of the snap when he get, went in motion from left to right. Going to bring a gain of one. It's going to be second down in nine. Ball spotted at 26. To 7.25, going to first. Bearcats lead 6 to nothing. Look for St. Paul to keep the ball on the ground here and, and try to establish that running game with the hopes that that will start drawing the defense in and open up the pass. St. Paul pretty balanced this year as far as run and pass. They don't want to get in a situation where they have to throw it. A lot of confusion on the splits this time. Two receivers go to the left. There's Jordy and Beckett. Single back set is Albertini, and it's going to be a flag on the Indians, and that's going to be a false start. I'm excuse me, a delay of game. So too much time at the sideline as we're having trouble getting our offense set. The last two plays, the Indians trying to get their split either to the left or right. They've had to switch two plays in a row, so I'm not sure what the confusion is. But either way, it's going to be a loss of five on the play. It's going to bring up second down and 14, unadvised penalty for the Indians. Can ill afford to lose any yardage just by penalties. Two receivers wide to the left. Single back set is Albertini behind Bourne. It's a pitch to Albertini. Gets around the left side. Trying to find some room. Gets his penalty yardage and more back. He's going to gain about seven on the play. It's going to bring up a big third down and let's call it seven. Let's call it third down and five as Albertini gets almost back up to the 30-yard line, Indians need to get to the 35, so it's going to be a long five, between five and six yards they need for a first down. So big third down play, still in their own territory. 6.30 left to go here in the first. Big third down play here. Two receivers wide to the right. Born. A little confusion again. Now it's going to be a timeout with Wattrick. I'm not sure what all the confusion is with the sets, but... uh, Timeout by St. Paul, so we're going to be back after this 30 second timeout. You're with St. Paul football on Hot 105.
St. Paul Tire and Lube, locally owned and operated, offers the small town convenience you love without the big city prices. They offer free pickup and drop off in St. Paul, so you're not left stranded while your vehicle is in the shop. They offer tire repair and also offer oil change and new tires. When you find yourself in need of new tires or an oil change and need to keep going, visit with St. Paul Tire and Lube, 620-449-2323. St. Paul Tire and Lube, proud supporters of the St. Paul Indians. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports, Hot 105. Well, welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul in this substitute game. The Indians welcome to Bearcats Town. The Bearcats get an opening possession touchdown from them. Indians were straight out on their opening possession, so they lead. Bearcats lead 6 to nothing. Indians on their second possession got a big third and six coming up, about five and a half yards. They need to get to the 35. Ball spotted just short of the 30. Two receivers wide to the right, single back or born in the shotgun by himself. He rolls to his right, going to be a little bit of pressure, throws down the middle, has pack it down there, and he catches it. He reels that in in a juggling catch down to the 25-yard line. Born kind of shot, put that up in the air, barely got over the defender's hand, and Pekka juggled it for about three yards before he reeled that football in. So first down for the Indians. Good catch by Caleb Pekka. He juggled the ball. He saw the hit coming, but he didn't lose focus or concentration. Reeled the ball in, took the hit, and remained in possession of the ball. So that was really important for Pekka. Thompson with a lot of pressure on Born coming in there. Born had to get rid of that ball quickly. Pekka was behind the defense, but Bourne didn't put much on it, and I thought the defense was going to get a fingertip on it. High formation. Carlos is a pullback. Albertini at tailback. First and 10 for the Indians. Ball to 25. Back to pass and four. Looking down the middle. Now he's going to roll to his right. Now he goes to his left. He throws it late to Albertini. Gets it away. And he's going to have a short gain on the play, but irregardless, it's not a loss of seven, and it's going to be a gain of two, a good job of improvising by Bourne as he was under duress, just looking for him to get that football away and found Albertini off the left side. That's what I was talking about, Bourne able to make something out of nothing there. I thought he was going to get sacked for a big loss, and he made something happen and was able to at least make a positive gain on that play. Second and nine, ball spotted at the 24-yard line. The Indians come up the line of scrimmage, split, split back formation this time. Carlson and Albertini, Bourne up under center, ball at the 20. Four yard line. Back to pass is Bourne. Rolls to his right. Now throws it over the top, and it's going to be out of bounds, just over the outstretched hands of Adam Albertini. Looked like they tried to do a little rollout pass in the flats. It wasn't there, so Albertini did the right thing and went up the field. Bourne tried to get it over the top, but he was sprinting to his right, just put a little bit too much on it. Right over the outstretched hands is Adam Albertini. Yeah, that was a touch pass, uh, you know, a lot of touch by Bourne, but the heat was on. He could feel the Burling game defenders breathing down his neck, and so he had other things on his mind and just overthrew at him a little bit. Third down and nine, ball at the 24, 507 left to go here in the first. Bearcats lead six to nothing. Two down territory for the Indians. Need to get positive yards here. High formation. Hand off to Albert, no, yeah, hand off to Albertini, excuse me, off the left side. He starts his right, went to his left, going to bring up a big fourth down and five. For the Indians, the ball spotted right at the 20, just inside the 20. The Indians look to look, need to get right at the 15-yard line for a first down. Official timeout. As first Albertini first. lost his shoe, lost his left shoe as he rapidly tries to get it reeled back in. What do you game, think of the game so far, Mike? So far, it's been just what we expected. We expected a big game by both teams. St. Paul, a lot of pressure on that last play, was able to pull something out of nothing, get a nice gain through a nice pass to Pekka. So offense is working pretty well. It's just going to be a matter of each team feeling each other out, trying to probe around, find a weak spot, which St. Paul was able to do last week against Osborne. It was a lot the same way, a little bit slow to start. But once they found what they were looking for and made the adjustments they needed, they were able to make something and make something happen. Shotgun formation, Doherty split wide to the right. Albertini's a single back set in the pistol next to Bourne. Back to pass is Bourne. Looking for Doherty on the slant. Knocked down incomplete. And ball falls incomplete. So the Bearcats will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Pretty good coverage put together. Number six, Casto, one of the many seniors for the Bearcats. Doherty was... Almost there, just good coverage, and knocked away at the last second on the slant. 
as Doherty was trying to run a slant. So in his defense back on the field, first and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 20, right in front of us on the ball field. 429 left to go here in the first, 6 and nothing. Bearcats lead. India is not able to put any points on the board, but now is the time they need to really stiffen up and hold on defense and not allow themselves to take a two-score, be behind by two scores here. A lot of split formations. This time single-back set is Greenwood behind Giffen. Two receivers split wide to the left. Giffen in the pistol. Here comes the snap. Going to run the option to the left. He's going to keep it, pitches it late, and Albertini, Anthony Albertini has to get over there late to make that tackle, but not until a nice eight-yard gain on the play. A late pitch by Giffen to Greenwood. Good job by Anthony Albertini getting over there to stretch that play out. We're going to call second down and three. Ball spotted about the 27-yard line. They ran the option to the strong side of the field where the two receivers were split to the left that time. This time, a regular set for the Bearcats. Excuse me. No, Giffen still in the, sh- in the pistol. Set behind him is Greenwood, slot receiver to the right. Going to run that pitch to the right. Going to have a halfback pass, and it's over the top and over the head. Pass intended for music. There's been a, their prime target tonight. It's going to bring up a third down and big third and three for the Indian defense. As the Bearcats is at their own 27. Music was open by a couple of steps there. This over, got overthrown by four or five yards. Greenwood overthrows him slightly. Two receivers to the left is Noonan, and Greenwood to the right is Music. And the shotgun is Giffen. Third and three. Now motion from left to right. Back to pass. Right on a little out pattern. Hit quickly, though. He's going to be just a little bit shy of the first down, I believe, on the spot. I think he's just a few inches shy. Yeah, he was right at the marker when he caught it. They're going to measure it. He is right at the marker. I think he may have got it just by the nose of the football. Good hit by Pekka. Come up hitting quickly, but they give him the spot on the forward progress as they do come out to measure on a big third and three. And the Bearcats did get the first down by the nose of the football. All about the spot, I think, at that point. That's a pretty decent spot. He caught the ball right there at the 30-yard line, just shy of the 30. Good stick. Pushed him backwards, but they always get forward progress. So, in the defense, come up just a little bit short here, but still have the Bearcats pinned back in their own territory. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball, nose of the football, sitting just short of the 30-yard line. He splits wide to the left. Bourne comes out on him. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set to his right is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap. Hard count. Hand off right up the middle, and he falls down quick as he loses his footing. It is Greenwood falls off, falling on him? It is Carlson? It's going to be a gain of about three. It's going to bring up second down and seven. Three ten. Let's go here in the first. Bearcats lead six to nothing. A little better offensive possession by the Indians. The last time they had the football, got down to the Bearcat twenty, but it was unable to convert on a fourth and five. And the pistol is given wide to the right is music. Single back set is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap on the second and seven. Back to pass. Pump, pump fake. Going long again. Bourne on the coverage. Turns his head around. They're going to throw a flag on Bourne. As big music sticks his left or right arm out and tries to make some space on the D-backs. They're not going to call that. They're going to call for Bourne not turning his head is what they're going to call. He has a height advantage on Bourne, which they apparently have seen on the film. All Bourne has to do is turn his head around. They yeah. probably do not make that call, but and yet they did. They need to watch the offensive pass interference as Music does a good job of sticking his arm out there trying to make a little space for himself. It's going to be a penalty against the Indians. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. It's going to give the Bearcats first down into Indian territory now as they march the ball down to the 33-yard line. A 15-yard penalty there is really going to hurt the Indians. Give Berlin game a first down plus get him in the Indian territory. Indians. First and ten for the Indian defense here. Pistol formation is Giffen. Single back set is Greenwood. Split to the left. Now motion is music from left to right. And off up the middle. Oh, hit by Colton Spielbush. And hit hard. No gain on the play. A loss of one as Spielbush says no way here up the middle as he hits 
pushed Greenwood hard for no gain. He did not bite on the motion. Stayed home, did his job. It's going to be second down and 11 for the Bearcat. Yeah, Spielberg saw Greenwood headed at him, and he just shot in there like a rocket and stopped him right in the tracks and for a good loss of a yard. Good play by Kobe Spielberg. Ball spotted at the 34-yard line, second 11 for the Bearcats. Music splits wide to the right, and the pistol is Giffen. Set behind him is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap. Option to the left this time. Giffen's going to keep it up the middle. He goes. going to have a nice gain on the play as he stretches towards the first down marker. Depending on the spot here, how close he got to it. It's going to be second down and, or excuse me, third down and short as the ball is now down across the 25 to the 24-yard line. Third and one as option to the left-hand side that time. Giffen kept that ball. Not quite as as far as stats goes as scoring on his feet, but did a good job running the option to the left that time. He's in the pistol again. One receiver split wide to the left. Greenwood is set to his, his hand off to Greenwood. Hit quick by Spillbush again. Spillbush knocks him down for no gain on the play. It'll be Spillbush having a big night on this drive so far. It will stop him there again for no gain. It's going to bring up a big fourth down and a yard and a half for the Bearcats. The Indians defense got a shot to stop the Bearcats here on a big fourth down and one. They're going to call timeout. I think the quarterback's over there by the coach. Play clock's running down. Less than a minute left in the quarter. 50 seconds left in the quarter. Bearcats lead 6 to nothing in a good football game here tonight. And that's going to be a timeout on the Bearcats. The score is 6 to nothing. Bearcats lead, but the Indians with defense with a big fourth down and one coming up. Here against the Bearcat offense. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Jerry and Kevin Winter, along with the entire crew at KW Trucking, are proud to bring you this broadcast of the St. Paul Indians. KW Trucking specializes in heavy equipment and heavy truck repair, late model rebuilding, and body work from large trucks down to cars. They also have a full-service machine shop and a great selection of both used cars and trucks. See Jerry or Kevin at KW Trucking or call 449-2763. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. Full stands, west end zone. Pretty full down there, too. The Alumni Friends Association selling hamburgers and brats. Had the grills going, smoked clock, though. Big time here in St. Paul, Kansas. Big night. St. Paul trails 6 to nothing. They have a chance to shut down the Bearcats here on a big fourth and one. Ball spotted about the 24. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set to his left is Greenwood. He's going to keep it himself off the left-hand side. Right up the middle he goes. Dies forward. He's going to be real close on the second effort. He's going to be extraordinarily close to the first down. At the weight on the spot, I think he has it, and he does. First down, Bearcats. Giffen, the initial stop, might have had him short, but second effort with the long frame of Giffen stretched forward for the first down. Ball spotted about the 21-yard line, first and 10 for the Bearcats, into Indian territory. Music splits wide to the right. Herrick wide to the left. In the pistol is Giffen. Set to his right is Greenwood. Here's a snap. He's going to roll back to pass. To his right, screen pass to Noonan. He's got a lot of room in front of him. Splits back to the middle of the field. And he's going to be hit, but it's going to be a touchdown. Bearcat. Yeah, that screen pass was wide open in the middle of the field. Not a defender within 10 yards of the receiver, Noonan. Touchdown Noonan on the screen pass to the right side. It gets the Bearcats to score, and they lead 12 to nothing with 12 seconds left to go here in the first. Looks like they're going to go for two here on the extra point. That time they went, tried to kick the extra point. This time they are going to go for two on the PAT. The Gibson. Is in the shotgun. Single back set is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap. Good snap. He's going to roll to his right. Goes to his left. And it's going to be... I'm not sure what he's going to call incomplete. Good coverage by Bourne that time as he's turned his head. As now the flag comes in the air because number 12... Or excuse me. Number 20. Music pointed to the scoreboard. 
as he was running after the incomplete pass. So he must have got irritated by somebody or something. Yeah, Unfortunately, I thought, no, it's against the Indians. I thought the flag would be on him for pointing to the scoreboard. I don't know who the flag is on. The fans can say whatever they want, but music's the one that he's the one that pointed to the scoreboard, so I'm not sure who said something. But how can that be a flag against either way? It's unsportsmanlike conduct against the Indians. That would be excessive. Well, now that, now it must be wrong because now they're backing up to 15. That, they, he pointed the wrong way on the flag. The ref pointed the wrong direction on the flag because they are music. It, he, it was on him because now they're backed up to 15 on the kickoff. So obviously the ref pointed the wrong direction. I don't know if a fan or something. There's a lot of people down there under the west scoreboard. I was having a heck of a time keeping up with what we were doing there. But regardless, the ball ended up where it's supposed to be, I think. Yeah, the ball's at the 15. The flag was on music for pointing at the scoreboard as he ran away after the touchdown. Bearcats lead 12 to nothing. This could be an advantage for the Indians here as now Albertini stands at his 15. A drive and kick. Albertini's going to take it on the fly about the 15. Up to the 20. 25. Cuts to the left. To the 30. Spins away. Up the middle he goes. Now there's wow. a that comes in late to the left side. Back, I think. And they're blocking a back or a hold. It's going to negate all the game from Albertini. Now the flag's going to come back. It's down. They call it the law averages when you throw the flags, and this is going to average it out on the kickoff. Yeah, Sports like conduct on the music backed him up at the 15 and got the kickoff. But Albertini returned the ball up across the 30, and the ball spotted at the 34, so that's going to negate because the flag is back at the 28 yard line. It's going to be a 10 yard penalty on the block in the back. It's going to back the football back up to about the 17 yard line for the Indians. Tough break for the Indians. That's a nice return by Adam Albertini, especially if the Indy was able to get away from two defenders and add a little, about five or six extra yards, but it was all for nothing with the penalty. 12 to nothing. Indians trail to the Bearcats here. First and 10 for the Indians. Four seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Up to the line of scrimmage. They come into the eye. Carlson up throwback. Albertini at tailback. Bourne up under center. It's going to be a handoff to Albertini, he's got a little bit of runner, grabbed by the shirt tail, drugged down by big number 76. Is Snest rude, but it's going to be a seven-yard carry by Albertini. He's going to bring up a second down and three as he crosses the 25, or excuse me, crosses the 20 up to the 24-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. End of the first quarter score is Bearcats 12, Indians 0. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Go to St. Paul football on Hot 105. Richie's Drugstore in Erie has been serving the area since 1883 with a strong belief in providing customized care and doing more than just filling prescriptions. Pharmacist Morgan Bunton is now taking appointments for free consultations and sign-up assistance for Medicare Part D prescription plans that will fit your needs. Open enrollment begins October 15th and ends December 7th. Even if you're in a current plan, let Richie's help you determine if there's a better plan to cover your unique needs and prescriptions. Call or stop by Richie's today on the corner of State and Maine in Erie. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. The Indians got their hands full with the Bearcats here tonight. They trail 12 to nothing after the first quarter. Indians just a couple defensive stops away from holding the Bearcats. But the Bearcats, a great football team come here to town. The Indians trying to get something going here offensively on their third possession of the game. Last possession, they drove the ball down to the 20-yard line, but unable to convert on a fourth and five. It's going to be second down and four. Ball spotted 24 right in front of us. Good vantage point for Mike. And I, I formation, Carlson, the fullback, Albertini at tailback. Born up under center. Here's the snap. Option to the left. Albertini with a little bit of running room. Hit hard. Stays in bounds, but he crosses the 30 up to the 33. It's going to be a first down for the Indians. Nice run by Adam. He took a hit, too, right at the end of the run and kept on going, getting another two yards at the end of that run. Beautiful belly option around the left-hand side. Beautiful pitch to Bourne's left side. Albertini got around the end, got around big number 32, Tristan Lee, who is just huge for a defensive end. They must do a lot of crashing on from that yeah. defensive end in the eight-man game. I would pitch it if I was Bourne, too. First and ten for the Indians. I formation. Albertini looking for some run room right up the middle. Pushing hard. Still running hard. He's going to cross 
the 30, getting close to the 35-yard line, just spotted short of it. It's going to be a gain of about three on the play. Second down and call it. We're going to call it a gain of two. Second, eight. Ball spotted. About the 34-and-a-half-yard line. Bourne comes in from the sideline with the play. Just underway in the second quarter. Indians trail 12 to nothing. Officials are out I'm out doing now. as two receivers split wide to the right for the Indians. Look like Got a shoulder pad. Shoulder loose. pad. Grant Hutcherson getting a shoulder pad fixed. Single back set is Carlson. Bourne's going to be up under center. Pekka and Albertini split wide to the right. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Carlson. Got some running room. Cuts back to the middle. First down and there for Carlson. Nice run across midfield down to the 31 yard line. First and 10, the Indians. Nice run. Great blocking from the line. Gives the Indians a first down into Bearcat territory. First and 10 for the Indians down to the Bearcat 31. Talked about it in the pregame. Give Carlson a little bit of a gap there, getting past that line of scrimmage into the second level, and he can really make some things happen. He showed it on that play. Castico. Casto with a game-saving tackle from the D-back. That's what you want. D-back's making tackles on your running back. Same set. Two receivers wide to the right. Born upper center. Carlson, single back set. Here comes the snap. Carlson left side. Burns going to keep it. Got some running room. Grabbed by the shirt tail, but missed tackle there. Big number 76 heading by the shirt tail. Boy, I'm going to have to have some help with that name. That's Snaw's rude again. It's rude. It's rude. <laughs> He's going to have a nice eight-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring second down and one. Less than, or excuse me, a nice run on first down. If you hit a nine, it'll be second and one. Well, the hardest part of our job is, Dan, trying to figure out the other <laughs> roster sometimes. It's hard for this old farm board to be that good of vocabulary. I should yeah. pay more attention in school. <laughs> we'll just do our best. Second down and one. 10.34 left to go here in the first half. Indians trail 12 to nothing. Back into the eye. Carlson a fullback. Albertini at tailback. Born up under center. Here's a snap. Lift by the Bearcat. Now they got born by the shirt tail. That play went nowhere on the pass play as they stunted from the linebacker position. And on a second and short, now we're in third and long. I think the Indians should have just been happy doing what they was doing. Yeah, they lost about eight yards on that play. Seven yards. There was a stunt by the linebacker and tons of pressure, and it's going to be a loss of about eight on the play. It's going to bring up third down and nine. Now the ball's backed up at the 30-yard line, so the Bearcat defense dialed up a stunt, and that time it worked for them in, a, in the right position. That was the right call at the right time. That was a big defensive play. It went from third and short to third and long. That's going to change the way Coach Watrick's calling the play here on this down. Ball spotted at the 31 Third and nine. Doherty splits wide to the right. Back to pass is born. Needs a roll to his right. Steps up in the pocket. Throws across the middle. Picks off. Picks off across the middle. He's got some running room down the left-hand side. Goes number 15. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds about the 25-yard line. That was picked off by Havistat. As Bourne was looking for Doherty across the middle. Threw it late. Is there a flag on the play? So there's a flag across the field. It could negate part of the return yardage. It is a block in the back against the Bearcats. But there's the first turnover of the game, folks, and it's against the Indians. The flag is now, I see it, at the 34. So that's going to back them up 10 from there. It's going to back them up behind midfield. So Indians defense going to have to step up and put a stop to the Bearcat offense. Yeah, mistakes and turnovers, along with a couple of big plays, is what's been the difference so far in this first half, giving Burling game a 12-point lead which, relatively speaking, is not that bad because they haven't been able to convert either extra point, and both scores have come off really breakdowns in the defense rather than actually Burling game being better up to this point. I think the teams are still pretty evenly matched as far as matchups go. Bearcat ball at their own 37. And then defense trying to get on the field here. One receiver to the right, one to the left. In the pistol is Giffen. Single back set is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap, first and 10 to the Bearcats. He's back to pass again. Pump fake, going to go deep for Noonan, and he's just overthrown and passed his hands on the stop and go. So good pump and go. Indians need to get some deep, need to get some pressure on the Giffen to stop them pump and go. Horn on the interception did a good job of stepping up into the pocket. He stepped into a stroke good, but number 15 just stepped in front of that. The pass is intended for Doherty. Yeah, they need some help from the defensive line, get some pressure. Defensive backs are doing a pretty good job of coverage, so you get outside of about 10 yards downfield, and so the more time you're giving the quarterback to throw, the tougher it's making on the back. 
Second down and 10. Music and Noonan split wide to the right. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set behind him is Greenwood. Second down and 10. Option to the right. Giffen's going to keep it. Hutcherson has him. And no gain on the play. Maybe even a lock one is Hutcherson and Pullman. Grant Hutcherson doing a great job of playing that option around the left side. It's going to be a loss of one. It's going to bring up third down in 11. Ball spotted at the 35-yard line. Hutcherson played that option just right. He was right there. He's got quarterback from the defensive end position, and he played it well. Closed in as soon as he figured he was going to carry it and made a nice tackle. Third down, 11. Two receivers split wide to the left is Music and Noonan. In the shotgun is Giffen, set to his right. Giffen, Giffen is in the pistol, set to his right is Greenwood. Now Greenwood goes into motion, back to pass, looking to his right. Now across the middle, throws it on. Oh, oh man, it's picked off by Adam Albertini on good coverage against Greenwood. So we'll see what the Bearcats elect to do in their own territory here, see if they are forced into a punt situation as they change personnel onto the field. The Indians' defense may have forced the Bearcats into the first punt situation. It looks like Greenwood is backing up into punt formation. Now Adam Albertini goes back deep for the Indians. So good defensive if they do punt here. Good defensive stop stand by the Indians. Need to be careful here against a potent offensive team like the Bearcats and make sure they don't go for it. Back into punt, and he does punt. It's a poor punt. You can tell they don't punt very often. As that went off the very tip, and he got a nice ramp, uh, roll, and it went down to the 25, but that almost hit lineman right to lineman. Yeah, it <laughs> As that ball didn't get three foot off the ground, it looked like a, a, it looked like a chip and roll golf shot, if that helps you any. For as bad a punt as it was, it didn't turn out too bad for Burlingame because it rolled a long way. It didn't fly very far, but it sure rolled a long That's way. Very, down the field. very dangerous. That could have hit an Indian yeah, or anybody. If it would have hit a Bearcat at the line, it would have been down right there, but there's a couple Indians right close to it. It wasn't their fault because, uh, that was like a uh, like a chip run up to the green, <laughs> like old sand green or sand green country club. That's right. High formation for the Indians. First and ten. Hand off to Albertini off the right side. Not much gain on the play. Good hit there by the Bearcats. Going to be a gain of two. And Albertini is going to get up to about the twenty-five yard line. It's going to bring up second down and nine. Eight sixteen left to go here in the first half. Bearcats lead twelve to nothing. Indians need somebody to step up and make a big play here. Bourne coming off the first turnover of the game through an interception. The Hobbestat. Second down and nine. Eye formation. Carlson the fullback. Albertini at tailback. Up to the line of scrimmage they come. Here comes the stop. Bourne's going to keep. Busted play there. Busted play. As the stop come up to the line of scrimmage, Bourne had to keep it, and he's not going to gain any on the play. He's going to lose a half a yard. It's going to bring up third down and nine for the Indians. Ball spotted at the 24-yard line. The Indians in a big third and long. Need to convert some first downs as Doherty comes back in the game. Pullman comes out. You know, not only the front line of the defense for the Bearcats is big, but those linebackers, pretty good size and pretty athletic, especially with that stunt going on where you move the lineman out of the way and make room for a linebacker to come around. That causes a lot of problems for that offensive line of St. Paul. Two receivers wide to the right for the Indians. In the shotgun is Bourne. Here comes the snap. Rolls to his right. Now a lot of pressure. Goes back to left. Scott Peck out there. Scott, one man to beat. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Indians. No flags. There no flags play. on the play. Two on the weak side tight end. The Indians on the board. 55-yard touchdown pass from Braven Bourne to Caleb Pekka. Caleb Pekka was wide open, just one man to beat. Turned the gas on, got by him, and to the end zone he went. 12-6 to six is the score. 6.59 left to go here in the first half. Bourne to Pekka, 55-yard touchdown pass on a third and nine. I said somebody needs to step up with a big play, and guess who it was? Caleb Pekka and Braven Bourne hook up again. They line up for the extra point. Indians trying to make this a four-point four point ball game. 12-6 to six to score. Born in the shotgun. Two slot receivers to the right. He rolls. Now he goes up the middle. Head down. Driving for the end zone. Extra point is good. Raven Born with second effort. Gets in there. Cuts his score to 12-8. to eight. 6.59 left to go in the first half. Indians show offense of themselves after the good defensive stand. Held the Bearcats. We're right back in the hunt here, 12 to 8, 6.59 left to go here in the first half. That's going to show the value of those extra points. You know, they took a chance to try to kick one to the first score for Burling game, 
wasn't able to convert to the two-point conversion on the second one. St. Paul doing what they do, getting those two-point extra point conversions at the end of the game, especially in a tight one. That could be all the difference in the world. But i got to apologize to you at home. I know that when old Dan Vick gets excited and takes real <laughs> mic out, you probably can't hear nothing on the other end, but it's hard to hold it in when you see things happen. I need to try to grab my mic and bring it further from my mouth. But either way, if you didn't catch that, that was a touchdown for the Indians. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's a lot of excitement. In a game like this, a big play like that, you can't help but get excited if it takes the mic out. I'm sure the folks at home can understand and probably scream along with us. Just know if I'm screaming, it's something good for the Indians. <laughs> That's right. It's something good for the other guy. That's right. Alejandro Mate with Styles sitting in some more kickoff here as Mate tries to show his leg as the – Bearcats are in kick return for the first time tonight. Matai's opening kick is going to be a short kick. It's going to be returnable. It's going to be taken at the left sideline. Greenwood on the carry. He's got some running room. A couple of Indians fall down back to the middle. Easton Dent finally gets him for out about the 20. So good job by Dent to make that tackle on Greenwood. Started from the left side, went to the right side. Move that mic a little further from my mouth. See if the Indians defense can take advantage of that momentum. They need to make sure they stay on music number 20, so I'm sure the Bearcats are going to try to answer that Indian score to take the energy out of the Indians. Giffen in the shotgun. Greenwood set to his right in the pistol. Wide to the right is music. born out there on him. Music has a size advantage. Here's a snap. Hand off to Greenwood. Got some running room off the left-hand side. He's going to have a nice gain off her. Now a flat right, comes in, in late. Okay, right. Face mask. It didn't look like a face mask, but it could have been a face mask. It was right where the tackle was happening, so it's a pretty good indication that it may have been a face mask. You didn't see it was a face mask against the Indians. We'll see if it's a 5-yarder or a 15-yarder. That's going to be a first down for the Bearcats. It could be an inadvertent 5-yarder or it could be a personal foul, and I think it's an inadvertent 5-yarder. It is, so it's going to be a first down for the Bearcats as that lets the ball cross the 30 up to the 33-yard line, and that time Greenwood had a little space to run. Two receiving, Noonan and Music splits wide to the left. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set to his right is Greenwood. Here's the shotgun snap. First and 10. This time Giffen's going to keep it. He's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage, and ball almost showed a little bit of football. Spielbush comes in late to finish off the hit as Carlson was being blocked, making the tackle at the same time. Good job by Colin Carlson. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Very little, if any, game. The stick didn't even move on the other side. Ball still spotted about the 34-yard line on the Bearcats' side of the football field. 6.08 left to go in the first half. Bearcats lead 12-8 to after a born to peck a 55-yard touchdown play-action pass. Music splits wide to the left. Giffen in the shotgun, Greenwood to his right. Back to pass, looking to his left, now across the middle. Hit the hole! Oh, right, I and thought I he had that it. too early. That's I my thought fault. he had it. It's my fault because I seen it coming, and Caleb Pecker had that right in his sight, and he dropped it. Sure handed Caleb Pecker. I can't believe he dropped that right in his hand. If I wouldn't have said a word, he'd have caught that. Probably all your fault. Oh, I seen it was coming right at him. Uh, he was, oh, what great coverage, though, by yep. Caleb Pecker. As that pass was intended, I believe, for Greenwood. Check it off now. Play defense, third and ten. So. Third and ten. Ball still on the Bearcat side of the field. Same position they punted from last time. So, see, on third and ten here, Indians defense needs to step up. Two receivers wide to the left, one to the right. Need to get a pressure on Giffen this time. He's in the shotgun by himself. Here's the snap. It's going to be a little short screen pass. Hit quick. Good job by the Indians. Good job by Adam Albertini, I believe. Yep. Or maybe it was Bourne. It could be Bourne. I think it was Albertini. He's going to bring up a fourth down at eight. Ball spotted at the Bearcats 35. So look, see what they do here on fourth and eight. Big call on fourth down. This would be a big play for St. Paul if they can make a stop Back here on fourth. Front formation for the second time is Greenwood. We hope they find anyway. Let's watch the fake here. Albertini's backing up 20 to the 15. Four punt last time by Greenwood. Here's a snap. And it's a spiraling kick. It's going to be taken by Albertina. Returnable. Up the middle he goes. Now he goes to the left. Now back to the right. And he's going to be wrapped up and tackled right there about the 22. But good job. Indians back with the football. First and 10. 22. A little momentum swing going towards the Indians' way. Good job by the Indians' defense. Two series in a row on the Bearcats. First and 10 for the Indians. Ball spotted at 
the 22-yard line. This opportunity the Indians need. They made the stop on defense. Offense needs to step up here. They can put points on the board here. We're right back in the ball game. 5-0-4 left to go in the first half. Indians trail 12-8. to The Indians scored on their last possession on a touchdown pass from Bourne to Tucka. 65-yarder. She here to do what you've been doing. Shotgun formation is Bourne. A little confusion. Now he comes up under center. Set behind him is Albertini. Hand off Albertini. Left side looking for room. Not much space. Moves ahead for maybe a yard, two yard gains. It'll be second down and eight. Ball spotted at the 24 and a half yard line. A lot of beef to move up out of the way for the Bearcats. Got Tristan Lee on one defensive end. And what's he go, Mike? 260? Yeah, I think that was. And have big number 76. Snushrude. And then the other defensive end, they're all about the same size, all well over 200 pounds. Wide, two receivers wide to the right, second down and eight is Pekka and Albertini. In the shotgun is Bourne, rolls to his right, rolling, 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 looking, throws it late. Ooh, over the top. All falls incomplete. Uh, it was intended for Pekka. It's going to bring up a big third down and eight for the Indians at their own 24-yard line. 419 left to go here in the first half. Indians trail 12 to 8. Big third and nine for the Indians. The Indians really need to convert here. Make something happen. Big third and eight. Indians need a big play here. Try to play a little field position if nothing else. Two receivers, three receivers, wide to the left. Pekka, Albertini, and Doherty in the shotgun alone is born. Here comes the shotgun snap. Third and eight. Born back to pass. Got a little time. Now he tries rolling. He's going to fall down and be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a loss of about five. As Born had a little bit of time to throw it. Couldn't find a receiver, so he just went down. It's going to bring up a fourth and 13 for the Indians. Now, Snestrude got born. Snestrude goes 265, so that's a lot of weight coming down on top of you there. Lee's 245, so a lot of beef. It's going to be force the Indians into a punt formation here with the fourth and 14. Ball spot at their own 19. Kobe Spillbush needs to get off a good one here as Greenwood is stands about his is coming up to about his own 35 yard line. Here's a snap. They're going to put a little pressure on him. Good punt good by punt. Spillbush. It's going to be taken on the fly about the 31 yard line. Albertini's down there. Greenwood trying to make some room and he's wrapped up by Pekka. He did way really too much dancing around and he's going to be no gaming on the play. So good job by the Indians punt coverage. Good coverage by Anthony Albertini, who was down there on coverage, broke down, made him decide which way he wanted to go. While he was standing there deciding, Caleb Pecka decided for him, came in there and put him on the ground. we got a battle going on here, folks. Indians trail 12-8. to eight. Bearcats potent offense step back on the field. Indians defense going to have to step up again. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball spotted about to their own 29-yard line. Wide to the right. His music in the shotgun is Giffen set to his left. And it's going to be a handoff to Greenwood. He's going to miss a tackle, but Pekka comes up, wraps him up. As Grant Hutcherson was in there quick, and they drive him backwards for no gain on the play. Grant Hutcherson got in there quick and had Greenwood miss him, but Caleb Pekka come in from that D-back position, put a hit on him, and here comes Colin Carlson to finish that play off. Second down and 10 for the Bearcats. Right back up the line of scrimmage, trying to hurry things up here. Giffen in the pistol, set to his right. Look for the play action coming out is to a tight end. Now they're going to split music out to the right. Giffen in the pistol. Here comes the snap. Second and ten. And it's going to be a handoff to Greenwood again. Off the left-hand side, he's going to be cut down. Just a couple-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up a big third down and eight for the Bearcats. Ball spotted about the 33-yard line. Don't get sucked in now here on defense if you're St. Paul. They've run that up the gut a couple of times. You don't want to get sucked in. They're able to kick that tight end out. They've shown that flip screen that worked well for them and also just a straight-up screen pass over the middle. Two receivers wide to the right is Music and Greenwood this time. Or no, it's Noonan, excuse me. In the pistol is Giffen. Back to pass. Looking to his right. Throws it, and it's going to be caught. Oh. And Bourne misses that on Music. Thought he had that ball picked off. And it's going to be first down. Bourne went for the ball. Missed it. Could have knocked it down, but it's a first down for the Bearcats as Bourne just missed that football. But music reeled it in, and it's down to Indian territory down to the 32-yard line. Back up to the line of scrimmage comes the Bearcats. 219 to go in the first half. Two receivers wide to the right, one to the left. Empty backfield. Giffen in the shotgun. Everybody needs to stay home here. Now motion from 
Greenwood goes back with him. He's going to be a handoff to Greenwood right up the middle, trying to find some room to the right. He's going to be cut down by Kayla Pecker, who comes up for a quick good job by Kayla Pecker. That was good on the carry. From that D-back position, excuse me, Colt Newland came into motion from right receiver position back into the backfield. It's going to be a gain of two, second and we're going to call it second and seven, a gain of three. One receiver wide to the right. Now two comes to the right. Is Noonan and Greenwood. To the left is Music. Giffen in the shotgun by himself. Ball spotted at about the 27-yard line. Option to the left. He pitches it late and tries to cut back to the middle. Good job by the Indian defense. Holds him to a short gain. He's going to gain about one on the play. Good job stringing that out until help got there. It's going to bring up a third down and six. Ball spotted at the 28, uh, Indian 28-yard line. 119 left to go in the first half, 12 to 8. I think the Bearcats have two timeouts left, as well as the Indians, I believe. They all looking at their hands because up to the line of scrimmage. They're looking at their armbands for the play call from the sideline, as there is just over a minute left to go in halftime. In the shotgun, single back step behind him. Now motion is music. Now he's going to go on the up pattern. He's looking for some pressure. Comes from behind. He gets away. Now he's looking, there's now, he's, now the there's a block in the back, a flag down, and he's going to run out of bounds. He's going to have the first down, but there's a block in the back, flag back at the 33 yard line. There's a hold. So a whole line is a hold on the Bearcats as Grant Hutchinson man, had everything but Giffen sacked and could not wrap him up. They were that holding hard on the D backs when they think yeah. they have a sack or they're afraid of him scrambling, and they all kind of hesitate, and that lets a receiver get open nine times out of ten. 48 seconds left to go in the first half. 12 to 8, Bearcats lead. It's going to. 10 uh, yard penalty. Holding penalties. It's a 15 yard penalty from the spot. Count it off 10. Yeah, but they were behind the line. <laughs> it was third and five, and now it's third and 20. But either way, it's third and 20, which is good for the Indians. And the Bearcats are going to take out. Take a timeout. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. This is St. Paul Football and Hot 105. Hi, I'm Kendall Gammon. You may know me as a Kansas City Chief, but I'm also a proud graduate of Pittsburgh State University. Pittsburgh State offers more than 200 degree programs, small class sizes, and tuition so affordable, it earned Pittsburgh State a top 10 ranking on Washington Monthly's Collegiate Best Bang for Your Buck list. But don't take my word for it. Visit Pittsburgh State and see why there's nothing like being a gorilla. Learn more at pittstate.edu slash BA Gorilla. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. Dan Vid alongside Mike McCracken. Glad to bring you tonight's game. And we got a good one so far here, folks. 12 to 8, Bearcats up by four. Just what we expected. It's just a battle here. We're only in the first half, and both teams just just hashing away at each other. A couple of big plays on both sides of the ball. A couple of breakdowns on defense. 48 seconds left to go in the first half. Third, and let's call it 18 for the Bearcats. Coming out of a timeout to have one left. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set behind him is Greenwood. One receiver to the left, one to the right. Music and Noonan. Here comes the shotgun snap. It's a good snap. Back to pass. Pressure coming. Throws across the middle. Has his man, but wrapped up. He's going to be short of the first down, but it's going to be a nice 10-yard, 15-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up fourth down and call it five. Adam Albertini on the coverage on Noonan. And it's going to be another timeout, and they're going to be the last Bearcat timeout. 32 seconds left to go in the first half. Mike, we're going to go ahead and stay here because we got a good one going. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to watch when these teams are battling like that. They're running the ball, throwing the ball. Just, you know, all over the field, there's not been any kind of consistency because they're still just trying to find that one weak spot. And it's happened a couple of times for Berlin game. They've been able to take advantage of a couple of weak spots on those pass plays, two 20-yard pass plays. But St. Paul turned right around, found a weak spot of their own when Caleb Peck is out there all by himself and brought in that long pass play, the big touchdown for St. Paul. Fourth down, and let's call it four. Ball spotted about the 27-yard line. They need to get down to the 23 for a first down, 32 seconds left to go in the first half. Bearcats lead 12 at 8, but they're threatening into end the territory. But the big fourth down and four coming up. And that was their last time out, so even if they don't score, they're going to have to hustle the line of scrimmage with 32 seconds left to go. Big play coming up for the Indians' defense here. Need to get some pressure on Giffen. One receiver to the left, one to the right. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set to his left is Greenwood. 
He's in the shotgun. He's back. Good snap. Back to pass. Looking to his left. Over the top he goes. Overthrows. Incomplete. Indians are going to take over on down. Pass is intended for Noonan. Adam Albertini on the coverage. The Indians will take over. First and 10, and the Indians defense come up big again. Yeah, Indian defense made a good stand there coming into halftime. 27 seconds left. Give the offense an opportunity. Long ways to go and a short time to get there, but it can be done here. First and 10 for the Indians. Ball spotted at the 27-yard line. 27 seconds left to go in the first half. Indians still have two timeouts, but last week Coach Watrick was just happy to get into halftime. We want to uh, the Bearcats deferred, so they'll get the open half, uh, second half kickoff. Two receivers wide to the left, born in the shotgun all by himself. Colin Carlson set to the left, kind of in a slot position. Low snap, back to pass. Born's going to be sacked for about a three-yard left. 22 seconds left to go in the first half. Albertini was behind the coverage, but Born not even have, or didn't hardly have time to set his feet and didn't have a chance to see him. He's going to bring up second down and 13. Clock is running. Nine seconds, and I think Coach Watcher's going to be happy with let the first half come to the end. And he is, and that is going to be the end of the first half. Indians trail 12-8, to eight, but we got a great football game here in this sub-state game here at Miles Field. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout. You're listening to Paul Fick on Hot 105. Prairie Mission Retirement Village in St. Paul provides services to people in their retirement years. Prairie Mission meets a wide range of needs from health care to assisted living and independent living apartments to elderly daycare services, including transportation. With our 7 to 7 dining, residents get up when they desire, eat when and what they want, and continue to live a full and happy life. Your family deserves the best in retirement care, so give Prairie Mission Retirement Village a call today for more information at 620-449-2400 or visit them at 242 Carroll Street in St. Paul. Get ready. KKOI, Chinook, Iola, Coffeeville. Number one for the hits. Here we go with Hot 105. A My Town Media Station. Jerry and Kevin Winter, along with the entire crew at KW Trucking, are proud to bring you this broadcast of the St. Paul Indians. KW Trucking specializes in heavy equipment and heavy truck repair, late model rebuilding, and body work from large trucks down to cars. They also have a full-service machine shop and a great selection of both used cars and trucks. See Jerry or Kevin at KW Trucking or call 449-2763. The Exchange State Bank is proud to be a member of the St. Paul community. The Exchange State Bank has served the area since 1914 and is committed to go the distance for you. A full-service bank, they offer savings, checking accounts, loan certificates of deposit, and more. They also offer competitive rates on loans and investments, all while giving you the kind of personal service you won't find at bigger institutions. Visit with Bob Conifer at Exchange State Bank in St. Paul, member FDIC, proud sponsor of the St. Paul Indians. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, welcome back to the St. Paul Tire and Lube halftime show with Mike and I as the Indians trail by four thir- or 12 to 8, but we got a good ball game here tonight, Mike. Yeah, it's just what we'd expect at the semifinal round. The winner comes out of here, goes to the state championship game, so you would expect both teams to be giving it their all, and that's what we've seen in this first half. Back and forth, back and forth, both teams trying to drive the ball. Burling game having some luck early on. St. Paul defense having a couple of breakdowns, but then stiffening it up late in the first half to keep uh, Burling game from putting any more points on the board. Stopped them on a couple of drives there, caused them to turn the ball over on down. On the other side, St. Paul able to put some points on the board once they finally were able to break up that pass defense of Burling game, get Kelopeka open wide out in the middle of the field. And the only thing St. Paul's had some real issues with so far has been giving Brave and Born enough time. He's got the receivers going down the field. Offensive line's got their hands full with that size and strength of the Burling game defense. A lot of size and strength that the Indians have been matching. About midway through that second quarter, Burling game, unlike last week, or kind of similar last week, come out with the first 12 points of the game, had the Indians defense on their heels. But the last couple series on the field, the Indians defense really stepped up playing well tonight. You want that Indians offense to match that Indians defense intensity. And I know they've played both ways a lot. I've seen some hands on the hips, and they're getting tired. But 
it's going to come down to heart and wheel in the second half. Yeah, there's no time to be tired when the winner comes goes home and the or the loser goes home rather. The winner goes to the state championship. You can be tired after the game's over. You need to get in there, leave everything you've got out on the field. I think we'll see that in the second half. We saw it last week. We know St. Paul can do that. They'll come out at halftime ready to play. Burling game comes out, receives the opening kick for the second half, so they'll have the ball. St. Paul defense be put to the test again, but if they can keep Burling game from scoring on that first drive, get the ball back in their hands, I think they've got a good chance of moving the ball down the field from the adjustments that Coach Watcher is going to make here at halftime. Yeah, i got to make up for some lost time here. You think after all year long, Mike would remember our sponsors as good <laughs> yeah. and uh, as loyal as they are to all the St. Paul Indians, but our timeout sponsor tonight, St. Paul Supermarket, and we've had like five timeouts, and I think I've uh, we both have failed to well, win. Well, it's my job to back you up, and I <laughs> dropped the ball, too. So. Well, we're our St. Paul Tire and Lou, and we're just going to go through our, our title sponsors, Farmers Bank of Kansas, Joe and Josh Smith. Go see them for all your banking names. Our pregame sponsor was Richie Pharmacy in Erie, Kansas. Our kickoff sponsor, Styles Fitness and More. Our timeout sponsor is St. Paul Supermarket for all your grocery needs. Halftime sponsor is St. Paul Tire and Lube. A postgame sponsor will be KW Trucking, and a player of the game sponsor all year long has been D-Rail Commodity. We want to give out a shout-out to all the other businesses in the town that supports the Indians, all the support out here tonight. The end zone full, the stands are full, and I know even the West Off Christmas party is going on tonight. All my good friends out there at West Off Interior want to give them a shout-out out there. Or let everybody know how lucky Joe and Bill West Off are, and you know what their biggest blessing in this life is? Being from St. Paul, Kansas. That, and they're two wives <laughs> putting up with them all the time. Well, yeah, and Tracy. So, yeah, that's for sure. They better count their blessings over that. We hope they're all having a good time enjoying okay. listening to the game. And even a bigger one than that has to look over both them guys, and I know very well it's a handful, is their account nationally. She just has a heck of a time keeping them real deep. That's the most un- unthanked job probably in the place. You get them two West Off boys together, and you got trouble on your hands. That's right. They're good people, and all the sponsors in town. All, everybody does such a good job not only supporting athletics, but academics. Uh, West Officers did a good job of supporting the woodworking program that started back up here in town. Uh, Mr. Spielberg did an excellent job down there as our VOAG and woodworking teacher. and A lot of the money has went through. And Industrial Creating did a, uh, had a big hand in getting their hand in to get the woodworking program back started at St. Paul. Very proud of that. All the continued support. And I know all the athletes and all the kids uh, appreciate everything that goes on for them. Yeah, you know they all appreciate it, and you can tell how much support they have if you just look up and down the sidelines here for St. Paul. You've got a uh, filled grandstand all the way to the top, all the ends outside the end zone. If you look down around the concession stand right now, you can't even see the other side of the street for all the people standing down there. So there's a heck of a crowd. I don't know what the gate take was tonight, but they're going <laughs> to really have enough to pay the officials, I'll bet. So good night for football here at St. Paul. The weather's perfect, and the game is everything you wanted it to be. It's just everything about tonight's positive. St. Paul really got some momentum coming into halftime by stopping uh, make it the defensive stand there, so hopefully they'll be able to carry that momentum on. And at the end of the game, it's going to be a good night St. Paul. There's no Bearcat coaches up here, so we'll go ahead and talk. I think I'd heard before the game, you know, small town, you hear about everything, but I think the game plan was coming in to, it was to try to force the Bearcats into a throwing situation. Greenwood's had he's almost a 1,000, well, over – all-purpose yards, he's well over a thousand yards. But rushing yards, he's over. He's close to a thousand yards. He's a big weapon in the backfield, and that is and and force him to pass. That has kind of bit the Indians, but they've only held, they've held the Bearcats to twelve points in the first half. So they really did a good job containing that potent running game. Yeah, they've done a good job containing the running game, and really, other than a couple of the bigger pass plays that they've given up, they've done a good job containing Giffen, who's the quarterback who stepped up as a backup and had two hundred yards against West Elk last week, and uh, so he. Very capable of making things happen out there. So far in the first half, St. Paul has been able to keep him at bay for the most part and keep themselves in this ball game at halftime. Halftime score twelve to eight. Bearcats lead by four, but it's a good ball game. Bearcats will get the ball to start the second half. So Indian defense going to have to step up to the plate right off the bat to start this second half. There's about seven minutes left to go here in our. St. Paul Tire and Lube halftime show. We'll be back after this two-minute break. Here's the St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Exchange Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of the St. Paul Indians. 
give us a call, visit our website, or stop in to let us do the comparison shopping for you and get a free no-obligation quote. Offering all types of insurance, including auto, motorcycle, home, farm, crop, watercraft, life, and health. Medicare supplements, and all lines of commercial or business insurance. Serving the four state area since 1964, Exchange Insurance in St. Paul is here to provide you with what you need, want, and should expect from your insurance agency. Farmers Bank is a full service bank with small town personal attention. They know you by name and are always glad to help you out. Offering 24 hour ATM and free banking locations in St. Paul, Walnut, and Hepler, Farmers Bank, member FDIC, is proud to help support the success that a small community can achieve with teamwork and determination. Richie's Drug Store in Erie has been serving the area since 1883 with a strong belief in providing customized care and doing more than just filling prescriptions. Pharmacist Morgan Bunton is now taking appointments for free consultations and sign-up assistance for Medicare Part D prescription plans that will fit your needs. Open enrollment begins October 15th and ends December 7th. Even if you're in a current plan, let Richie's help you determine if there's a better plan to cover your unique needs and prescriptions. Call or stop by Richie's today on the corner of State and Maine in Erie. St. Paul Tire and Lube, locally owned and operated, offers the small town convenience you love without the big city prices. They offer free pickup and drop off in St. Paul, so you're not left stranded while your vehicle is in the shop. They offer tire repair and also offer oil change and new tires. When you find yourself in need of new tires or an oil change and need to keep going, visit with St. Paul Tire and Lube, 620-449-2323. St. Paul Tire and Lube, proud supporters of the St. Paul Indians. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul, Kansas. And thanks for listening to our St. Paul Tire and Lube halftime show. Five minutes left to go in the first half. Very at in halftime before we start the second half. 12 to 8. Bearcats lead. Indians trail by four. But a great football game. Momentum was the first quarter of the Bearcats. I have to call momentum going second quarter, building the right way to the Indians defense and offense. Yeah, I agree with you, Dan. And one thing that I hate to even bring it up, but turnovers really hasn't been a factor as much as it could be. Uh, the interception by Burlingame really the only turnover of the first half by either team. So uh, good news for St. Paul, they just have one. Uh, better news for Burlingame, they've had none. So hopefully that's not going to be an issue and it's going to be all settled without having to worry about those turnovers on the field. Going into the second half here, I'll give you some statistics real quick. Hey, Mike, first off, we are all excited about calling these ball games, and we should write ourselves notes because we forget a few things. We should have told you this before the game, but if you're not around here, Mike, how do you listen to us online? I was getting ready to tell them all about that. If you get on YouTube and you search on YouTube, I can tell you what the address is, but there's about ten different letters at the end of it. Easier just to pull up YouTube, search for Hot 105.5 KKOY. You'll get the KKOY YouTube channel right at the top. The top link should be live streaming audio of this game, and you can hear us throughout the world on the World Wide Web on YouTube. And if you're close enough to get in range of the radio station there at 105.5, then by all means do that. But if you're outside of range of that or you've got some relatives that aren't back for the game in person, they can sure tune in at least for this second half, like I said, which we announced that earlier. But they can tune in for the second half and hear it all live on the Internet on YouTube, on the Hot 105 YouTube channel. And we have a lot of people a long ways away to love to listen to Indian football, so we apologize for not getting out early. Hopefully you found us on 105.5. If you listened before, you should have been able to get on the link before, so that's how you pick up our audio tonight for tonight's game. Mike, what do you got for stats quickly here? St. Paul stats, I'll just run down them real quick. we got the time. First half. got about three minutes left. Three minutes Braven, for warm up. Braven Bourne had eight passes in the first half for 82 yards. Uh, he had one interception. He also, on the ground, had eight runs or eight rushing attempts. Only got seven yards, but that's because he had four carries that were for a loss, mainly because of the breakdown in the pass coverage. He was back deep to pass and was brought down for a loss. That counts against his rushing total. Colin Carlson had one rush in the first half for 14 yards, a nice run right up the middle. Adam Albertini had eight carries in the first half for 41 yards, uh, the big 11-yard play, and he also had some special teams return, which really helped out on field position for St. Paul. In the reception department, Caleb Pekka, three, or two receptions, rather, for 80 yards, he had a touchdown reception. I should have mentioned Braylon Bourne with the one touchdown pass. It was to Caleb Pekka, and Brendan Doherty had no catches in the first half, but Adam Albertini had one for two yards. That's a rundown of the stats on the St. Paul side. On the other side of the field for Burlingame, 
quickly. The quarterback, Giffen, has had 12 passing attempts for 102 yards and two touchdowns. He's also rushed four times for 11 yards. Seth Greenwood has eight carries for 12 yards. Noonan has three carries for two yards. Receiving-wise for Burlingame, Herrick has one reception, 27 yards. Music, three receptions, 38 yards and a touchdown. And Noonan has two receptions, 35 yards and a touchdown. Also, <clears throat> number four, Seth Greenwood, had one reception in the first half for two yards for Burlingame. Uh, Burlingame spreading it around to a lot of people. St. Paul, same old names that you're used to. But that's a good thing. One thing we'll talk about as we get ready for the second half is Coach Watrick still has that weapon on the sideline. Uh, Keaton Kennedy, who's come in and played a lot of running back throughout the season, he's got fresh legs. So St. Paul used that running game in the first half. A lot of times that'll wear your defense down, especially those big guys when they're going both ways. They can start to get tired in the second half, and Coach Watrick has used that to his advantage so far earlier in the season by putting Keaton Kennedy in there. You get Kennedy, Albertini, Colin Carlson in that backfield. St. Paul looks awful dangerous in the second half. The halftime score is court, Burling game 12, St. Paul 8, but on the other half of the bracket, for all you interested, Hoxie leads Spearville 22-14, to 14, lead them by 8, so we got a couple of good bowl games going on in 8-man Division One semifinals. Keys to the second half, coming up after this short break, we're going to take a 30-second break, you're listening to St. Paul football on Hot 105. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kendall Gammon. You may know me as a Kansas City Chief, but I'm also a proud graduate of Pittsburgh State University. Pittsburgh State offers more than 200 degree programs, small class sizes, and tuition so affordable, it earned Pittsburgh State a top 10 ranking on Washington Monthly's Collegiate Best Bang for Your Buck list. But don't take my word for it. Visit Pittsburgh State and see why there's nothing like being a gorilla. Learn more at pittstate.edu slash gorilla. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports, Hot 105. Uh, welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. They put three minutes on the clock to let each team finalize their warm-ups here. We're going to get set for our second-half kickoff brought to us by Styles Fitness and more. The Indians will be kicking off to start the second half. They're going to kick from west to east, I believe. So Alejandro Mate will tee the ball up to start the second half. Keys to the second half, Mike's. To me, it's no one like the start of the game. You want to, you need the Indians' defense is playing well, but they need to create a turnover or two against this Burling high potent Burling game offense to keep momentum going and have a couple big plays with no penalties on offense in the second half. Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I think another key for St. Paul is to keep the offense on the field, which keeps the Burling game offense off the field. So if they can hang on to the ball, play a ball control game here in the second half, that will help them out, help them out a lot. Uh, penalties hasn't been too big of a factor, and what factor it has been has been pretty evenly matched. Both teams with four penalties in the first half. St. Paul had four for 35 yards. Burlingame had four for 40 yards. So e- evenly matched, call out a wash. Penalties hasn't been a factor. That will continue to need to be the case in the second half. We can't afford to have any penalties for St. Paul. Turnovers will be a key. No turnovers. Keep the ball in your possession. Ball control game and cut down on the mistake. Like Kickoff team is huddled around. Coach Stone King, Coach Watrick, Coach Stone King together for a few years now. Done a great job in the program back here in this sub-state game as the Indians line up to tee the ball up. Still a minute 30 left on the clock, so they're getting out there plenty early enough. Bearcats awful potent here on both directions, but the Indians really playing well the last couple weeks. Look for them to try to carry some of that second quarter momentum. It's To me, it's <laughs> last week Osborne got an open and a half uh, score to start the second half to expand that lead back out to 16. And that's from then on is when the Indians really kind of settled in on defense and offense took control of that ball game. So hopefully the Indians' defense can step up, step up to the plate here in this opening kickoff in the second half, maybe create a turnover if they can. Yeah, you know, they scored 27 unanswered points in the second half last week against Osborne, and so they're very capable coming out of halftime making things happen. Defense seems to play better sometimes in the second half, which would be great for St. Paul tonight if the defense can step up here and close this thing out, let the offense get some points on the board, and things look pretty good for St. Paul. Back deep is Noonan and Greenwood for the Bearcats. Alejandro Monte has the ball teed up. His first kick tonight, he hasn't had much action tonight. It was returnable, taken from the five, but good coverage by the Indians kickoff team. Look for Monte, try to boot just into the end zone, as our kickoff sponsor is Styles Fitness and more. 
timeout sponsors tonight has, is St. Paul Market, our title sponsors, Farmers Bank. Our pregame sponsor was Richie's Pharmacy. Our postgame sponsor is KW Trucking. And our player of the game, which Mike and I will have to come up with here in this second half, uh, from the first and second half, player of the game is brought to you by KW Trucking. Or, excuse me, Derail Commodity. As now they have 12 minutes on the clock. Bearcats lead 12-8. to eight. We'll start with possession of the football in the second half. Everybody. Well, a lot of people up on their feet. <laughs> Everybody up for the kickoff. Everybody up for the kickoff as Monte has that ball teed up. The wind has kind of died down a little bit, still blowing crossways from south and north. Field lies east and west. Well, here we go, folks. We had a good first half. Let's see if we can have a good second half here, or maybe a better half put together by the Indians. Drive and kick by Monte. Miss kicks it, goes, and it's going to be returnable by Noonan. Noonan up the middle. Now he's hit about the 17-yard line by Spielbush, but down there by Spielbush. So Monte got a couple of nerves working on him. There's a couple of kickoffs, but good coverage by the Indians. going to be first and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 18-yard line. Yeah, 18-yard line, not a bad start for the Indian defense. Pinning them deep back there. If Monte had kicked it out, he'd been at the 15, so the only net loss there is about three yards. Bearcats come out first and 10 from their own 18. In the pistol is Giffen. Set behind him is Greenwood. In the slot to the left is Music. Here's a shotgun snap. Option, no, it's a pitch around the left-hand side. He's got some running room, a lot of running room by Griffin. Hector has to run him down, but not until he crosses the midfield into Indian territory. Just a straight pitch around the left side. Indians unable to contain him, and that was a Greenwood finally got away from the Indians that time. 34-yard gain there by Greenwood on that play. Just came straight around the left side. Good blocking by the offensive line of Burling game on that play. Big first open and a half run by Burlingame. Greenwood finally got some space out and opener on that left hand side. First and ten for the Bearcats in Indian territory. Ball set at the thirty six yard line. Music splits wide to the right this time. In the pistol is Giffen. Now split out to the left is Thompson. Now he's up on the line of scrimmage. Giffen pointing him up on the line of scrimmage. Set to Giffen's right is Greenwood. He's going to be back to pass. Screen pass to the right-hand side. Pekka's back there, but he's Noonan gets around Pekka. Now he's in the Indian territory, still running, still going hard. Spibbush finally wraps him up, but not inside until he's inside the five-yard line. And too many missed tackles by the Indian defense. 34 yards on the first play, about 36 yards on that screen pass. First and goal for the Bearcats. Their high potent op- offense has come to life here in the start this second half, taking it right to the Indians. That's the second time the Bearcats has run that screen pass, and it's worked well both times. Yeah, worked good both times. Giffen in the pistol. Greenwood set, lone set behind him. Indians defense really going to have to step it up, step it up. First and goal. Pitch to Greenwood again. Left side again. Touchdown, Bearcats. They run that play two out of three times to start this second half, and it's worked to perfection. There's a pretty good halftime adjustment by the Bearcats. Gets them into the end zone, and they lead 18-8. to Pending the extra point. So just what the Bearcats wanted and not what the Indians' defense wanted to start this second half. 18-8, to Bearcats lead 11-14, left to go here in the third quarter. Just a simple pitch play around the left side to Greenwood. Get him out and opening. Pinning extra point. Giffen in the shotgun. Set behind him is Greenwood. <laughs> Slot to the right is Music. Option. This time it's just a pitch to the right. And he's going to be held up. No, he's still running. And he's still running. Somebody got a Like 14 Indians had a shot at him. Spielbush falls in on the pile late. Extra point is no good. As too many missed tackles by the Indians. It holds him out of the end zone. But the Bearcats lead by 10, 18-8, with 11-14 left to go here in the third. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're the St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Jerry and Kevin Winter, along with the entire crew at KW Trucking, are proud to bring you this broadcast of the St. Paul Indians. KW Trucking specializes in heavy equipment and heavy truck repair, late model rebuilding, and body work from large trucks down to cars. They also have a full-service machine shop and a great selection of both used cars and trucks. See Jerry or Kevin at KW Trucking or call 449-2763. 
Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul, where Indians trail 18-8, to open and a half drive by the Bearcats, get them into the end zone. Extra points, no good. So Bearcats lead by 10. 11-14 left to go in the third. Took a total of 46 seconds for the Bearcats to score on three plays on that drive. Cal has the ball ticked up. Adam Albertini stands inside his five. Driving, kick, going to be returnable, I believe. Albertini takes it right at the goal line. Up yep. the middle, or they're going to call a touchback because he ended up with a foot in there. It was right at the goal line, but Albertini's foot must have been in the end zone. Touchback, first and 10 for the Indians from their own 15, going to start deep in their own territory. Indians been here before now. They're not going to get excited. They're going to come out and control the ball. Indians need to take care of the ball, try to sustain the drive against this potent Bearcat offense. 18-8. to Indians trail by 10. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 15. 11-14 left to go in the third. I formation. Carlson a fullback. Albertini at tailback. Actually slot to the right is Carlson. Single back set is Albertini. Hand off to the right side is Albertini. Looking for some space. Grab by the shirt tail. And he's going to be now for no gain on the play. The big number 76 got his hand in there. Got a handful of jersey and he couldn't get rid of him. Number 11, Adam Albertini on the Not sure who had a handful of jersey. Maybe 82 did. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. I've seen that quite a few times. Someone in the line of scrimmage just reach out and get a handful of jersey, slow him down enough to get some help. I've seen Carl, Colin Carlson, the lead back, trying to make that block. He had his hands full, and he just reached around him. And I think it was big number 82, got a handful of jerseys. It's going to be second down and 10 for the Indians. Back at their own 15. Single back set. No, eye formation. Albertini, left side. Cuts back to the middle field. Got some running room. Gets away from a couple. Keeps his feet. 35, 40, 35, 30. Nobody's going to catch you. 15, 10, 5, touchdown, left side, Indians. Adam Albertini, lightning strikes that quick. Albertini with a couple big moves and a couple missed tackles. And give the Indians a touchdown to get right back in the ball game and answer that Bearcat score. I'm going to give him 75 yards on the touchdown run. Standing the extra point. Back to a four-point game. Big extra point here. Toxic 28, Spearville 14. Ten minutes to go in the third quarter. I thought Albertini was down a couple times there. He about lost his balance, but he's got such good feet and good balance. Put his hand down, kept his balance, was able to run that all the way in. Extra point. Single back sets Keaton Kennedy into the ball game. Second comes in motion from left to right. Strong to the right. Hand off to Carlson inside. Nowhere to go for him. So it's going to set a four-point board ball game. 18 to 14. St. Paul, both offenses getting on track to start the second half. Get a score. Each scores six points. That takes the score to 18 to 14. 10, 22 left to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're going to St. Paul football at Hot 105. Prairie Mission Retirement Village in St. Paul provides services to people in their retirement years. Prairie Mission meets a wide range of needs from health care to assisted living and independent living apartments to elderly daycare services, including transportation. With our 7 to 7 dining, residents get up when they desire, eat when and what they want, and continue to live a full and happy life. Your family deserves the best in retirement care, so give Prairie Mission Retirement Village a call today for more information at 620-449-2400 or visit them at 242 Carroll Street in St. Paul. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Mike, I got a feeling this game's going to be a nail-biter all the way to the end. 18-14, to 14, Bearcats lead by four. Each team gets a big score to start this second half. That was a lot on Adam Albertini, who broke a couple tackles. Looked like he was on one knee a couple times, kept his feet, turned on the jet. Had a 75-yard touchdown round. Mate's kickoff. Styles fitness some more high drive and kick into the end zone this time. Mate's warmed up. Maybe the Indians are too. Mate's excited. First touchback of the night. The Bearcats to start first and ten from their own 15. Well, that could be the shift of momentum. Bearcats came out of half, drove down the field in three plays, got some momentum. But St. Paul, like I said, they weren't going to give up. They've been there before, and they answered just that quick. First and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 15. Look for that running game to get started. Look to set up that play-action pass from Giffen. Shotgun formation. 
slot to the left is music. This is where they run that pitch play to start this second half. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Greenwood. Right up the middle. Hit quick by Albertini. Big number 66 to Anthony Albertini and Toby Spielberg in that backfield. But quick, a loss of one, second down and 11. That's That's a lot better. From that nose guard position, big Anthony Albertini start throwing his weight around. Throwing his weight around, and it's a lot better. He's been doing a good job in there. Hasn't let a lot past him up the middle, but that time him and Kobe Spielbush were all over Greenwood. Second down and 11. That time Carlson lined up to the strong side up the line scrimmage. This time a regular uh, linebacker set. In the shotgun is Giffen, one receiver to the right and left. Music is split wide to the right, can't catch the number to the left. Back to pass is Giffen. Looks at the left, quick pass, tries to put a move on. Good job, good ankle tackle by Bourne. A short gain on the play by Music. Looks like a two yard gain on that quick out, quick hitter. It's going to bring up third down and eight. Ball spotted about the 18 yard line. They need to get to the 25 for a first down. Big third down play here for the Indians defense. Third and long here. St. Paul defense needs to step up. 9-18 left to go here in the third quarter. 18-14. to 14, Bearcats up by four. Two receivers wide to the right is Noonan. And music. Single back set is Greenwood. Giffen in the pistol. Greenwood set behind him. Here's a shotgun snap. A little quick out. Flip screen to Noonan. It's Adam Albertini and Kobe Silvers. Wrap that up for a loss on the play. Nowhere to go to Noonan on that little flip screen to the left side. Fourth down and 11 for the Bearcats. Ball spotted inside their own 15. Good job by the Indians defense. Good job by Albertini and Spielbush getting out there to help him. Couldn't have been played any better by the defense. Greenwood standing about his own two-yard line for this punt. Greenwood, or, uh, Bearcats in punt formation. Adam Albertini backs up to his own 30-yard line. Good snap. And a good gets the punt off. Going to bounce. Albertini's going to get away from it. He gets away from it wisely, finally. He was trying to chase it down, but it's going to be good field position by the Indians. They're going to be touched down about the 34-yard line. And Adam really wanted to try to get that ball <laughs> and pick it up. Got about three yards from it, and there's a Bearcat closing in, so he wisely stepped back and just let it roll down to a stop. You know, I think if that had bounced up in the air just a little bit, and he thought he could grab it, he was going to, but it didn't. It stayed low and just rolled down the ground. 8-16 left to go in the third. 18-14, Bearcats lead by four. Adam Albertini coming off a big 75-yard touchdown run. A little better field position for the Indians. Doherty in the game, splits wide to the right. In the pistol is Bourne. Set to his left is Albertini. Bourne resets. Now he comes in motion. Shotgun snaps. Good. Bourne's going to keep it off the left side. Not much room, but a little bit of room. He's going to gain a couple yards on the play. He's going to bring up the second down at eight as he crosses the 35 up to the 36-yard line. Give him a gain of two. Second down and eight. Eight oh one. Let's go in the third. Bearcats up by four. Good stop by the Indians defense on the Bearcats' second possession of the second half. Doherty goes to his left. Now comes back to his right. Born in the pistol. Set to his left is Albertini. Second down and eight. Now Born or Doherty comes in motion. Hand off, it's a handoff, quick handoff to Doherty. Puts the shoulder pad down, up around his helmet. First down on the end around to Brendan Doherty, who come into motion. Yeah, Doherty about 10 yards rushing there. Don't see that very often. Usually he's catching the pass, but good Ten, run. 10 yard gain and a first down on the play. The reason I was a little slow enough to have me faked out, I thought Albert Kinney had the ball until I seen Doherty run around the left side with it. Yeah, it was a good first job in, by Moore. First and 10 for the Indians in the Bearcat territory. Down to the 33 and a half yard line. Doherty splits wide to the right. Same set in the pistol. Adam Albertini set to the right of Bourne. Doherty comes in motion again. Good snap. Option to the left. Bourne's going to keep it. Cuts up the middle. Nice read by Bourne. Rolls ahead for a nine yard gain on the play. Bourne really wanted to pitch that ball and he strung that out. Seen a little daylight and just finally reeled it in. Did what he was supposed to and had a nice yard, nine yard gain on first down. Yeah, that was a perfectly red option by Bourne. He really runs it well. He gets out there and waits till the last possible minute to make his decision. He even had the ball stuck out like he was going to pitch it, pulled it back in, tucked it, and put his head down and ran and fooled the defense as well. He had two Bearcats on him, one on his right, one on his left, and they was right there in position where they could have come hit him, but they was trying to string the play out, and he finally wisely just pulled it down. Second down and one. Ball now inside the 25 at the 24-yard line. Same set. In the pistol is Bourne. Here's the snap. Back to pass. 
Across the middle of the field, Caleb Pecker open, touchdown! There you go, that's what they needed to do, get Caleb, Caleb Pecker over the middle. They got so many weapons that are receivers with Thorne being able to throw that ball, suck them in on the run. Indians with the first lead of the game, they lead Burling game 20-18, to 18, folks. 26-yard touchdown pass, Braylon Bourne to Caleb Pecker. Pecker's second reception of the game for a touchdown, Bourne's second touchdown pass. That's what that running game does for you, Mike. It sets up that play-action pass, that weak side tight end. It's been a Heck of a weapon for the Indians this year. That pass, I was afraid, was going to go between it. Pekka's hands is a little bit high, but he was open, had to reach over his right shoulder to get his back him. pedal, but he was behind the defense far enough, pinning the extra point, and ends with a two-point lead. High formation. Hand off to Albertini, left side. He's hit quick, nowhere to go for him, and extra point is no good. Indians lead, 20-18, to 6.32 left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. This is St. Paul football on Hot 105. Richie's Drug Store in Erie has been serving the area since 1883 with a strong belief in providing customized care and doing more than just filling prescriptions. Pharmacist Morgan Bunton is now taking appointments for free consultations and sign-up assistance for Medicare Part D prescription plans that will fit your needs. Open enrollment begins October 15th and ends December 7th. Even if you're in a current plan, let Richie's help you determine if there's a better plan to cover your unique needs and prescriptions. Call or stop by Richie's today on the corner of State and Maine in Erie. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, welcome back where the Indians with the first lead of the ball game, 20 to 18. Off a nice pass and catch from Bourne to Pekka on the second down and one. That's what that running game does. That's up that play action pass. Pekka able to get behind the defense. Now Pekka showing a little fire out there on defense. Guys, Alejandro Mate's kickoff goes into the end zone. First and 10 for the Bearcats from their own 15. End of the pistol is Giffen. Set behind him is Greenwood. Going to run that pitch to the left. Try to string it out on the Indian. And a hole, a flag comes in late, but this time Indian do a great job of stringing that brave and born comes up. No gain on the play, but there's a flag. Is there going to be a hold? We saw out there. It came, or there should be a hold call, but we'll see what the call is. Holding against the Bearcats. It's going to be half the distance to the goal, folks. Going to push them back. And they'll replay first down. Then the 15 yard, or the ball, the flag is at the 14. Should push them back to about the seven yard line. Just a five yard. How can it be a five yard holding call? It's half the distance to the goal. It should be at holding the seven. Holding five or ten. I know, no, but it's at the 14, so it should be about the seven there. yard line. It is about the seven and a half yard line. Looks like they got it spotted at eight. First down and 16. This time, slot or wide to the left is Music. In the shotgun is Giffen behind him. Now, Music goes in motion. Back to pass is Giffen to the right side, looking for his man. Has him. Good tackle by Adam Albertini. Five yard gain on the play. Noonan with the reception. It's going to be a gain of three. Second down and 12. We'll wait for the Indians to step in front of one in short passes. Uh, pick six would be a shot in the arm right now for the Indians. Well, I hope you can see the future. If I can see the future. <laughs> Noonan wide to the right, music to the left, Giffen in the shotgun, single back set is Greenwood. Second down and 12, 6.20 left to go in the third. Motion from left to right is music. Shotgun snap, back to pass again. Looking to his left this time, has a man wide wolf in this tight end out here. He gets around Caleb Pekka. Adam Albertini pushes him out of bounds, but it's going to be a first down. Nice play action pass. To number 85, Harry called his number in the first half. Haven't called it. He was wide open coming for that tight end position. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball spotted across the 35 at the 37-yard line. Good play call by the Bearcats there. Slater with the head coach 
of the Bearcats. First and ten. The Bearcats playing from unfamiliar territory here. Don't know that they've trailed in a game all year long. All year. Slot to the left. No panic out of a bunch of seniors, though. In the pistol is Giffen. Single back set screen with motion from left to right. And a flag on the play. It's going to be a false start against the Bearcats. Got to push them back five yards. Going to make a first and 15. It's going to push the ball back to about the 31-yard line. You know, you start to just feel a little bit, not really desperation yet, but you feel a little nervousness on the part of the Bearcats, maybe being a little bit, like you said, unfamiliar. Just being behind makes them at least feel uncomfortable, which is a good thing for the Indians. Well, I hope it. Yeah. Hope it makes them feel uncomfortable, and I hope they get more uncomfortable. Right? <laughs> That's right. I do, too. Slit right to the left is music. In the shotgun is Giffen. Single back set is Greenwood. First and 15 for the Bearcats. Motion from left to right. It's shotgun snap back to pass. Look across the middle. Oh, boy. Almost swore that down, and then it was almost caught by Herrick. I'm sorry. I'm saying, oh, because... <laughs> I thought Bourne had a shot to pick that up, and it was almost a touchdown because Herrick had a chance to catch that. He was behind the defense. Bourne was trailing by about two yards, had a beat on the football, had his hand up. That's the second time we've seen Bourne maybe thinking more about going for the ball. Forget about the receiver. Second down and 15, ball spotted at the 32-yard line. Bearcat 32-yard line in their own territory. I think Paul may call a little break there. Indians lead 20-18, to 18, lead by two. Two receivers wide to the right. In the pistol, all alone. It's Noonan and Greenwood to the right. Music to the left. Back to pass. Trying to open up the pass game. Cross the middle. Trying to look for Eric. And there's well, going to be a five on the play. On and I believe it's going to be on Colin Carlson, maybe. Colin. But he was running right with Eric. It was that's a tough call on Spillbush if that's a pass interference call, and I believe it's going to be, which will be an automatic first down. Should be a ten yard penalty from the spot, but it's probably an automatic first down. So. Bearcats really trying to open up that passing game now. Yeah, the penalty's from the line of scrimmage. Be... It's from the line It's from the line of scrimmage, but either way, it's going to be a first down. I, I believe it's going to be an automatic. Well, I think it will. We'll see what they mark off. It was second and 15. The ball was at the 32 as they marked that off. 5.59 left to go in the third. And it is a 15-yard penalty, so it should be just enough for a first down because it was second and 15. And it is first and 10. The Bearcats move into Indian territory down to their 32-yard line. Giffen in the shotgun. To his right is Greenwood. Receiver to the right and left is Noonan to the right, music to the left. Giffen in the shotgun. Here comes the snap. It's going to be a handoff to Greenwood. He cuts back up the middle. He's got a little running room. Indians wrap him up, but not until he gains seven or eight yards on first down. That's what that passing game opens up. It opens up one works on the other when you're a balanced offense. That running game opens up that play-action pass, and when you pass out of that shotgun two or three times in a row, spread the Indians' defense out. Greenwood would a lot of speed. Second down and four. Ball down to the 25-yard line. One receiver wide to the right, one to the left, giving in the shotgun all alone. Motion from right to left is Greenwood. He's going to, Giffen's going to keep it off the right hand side as, and he's going to break a couple tackles and finally Caden, or, uh, Caleb Pecker comes up and make it. He's going to be a close to a first down. Giffen with a good hard run. Fake that end around handoff to Greenwood. I believe it is going to be a first down. Pretty good fake by Giffen on that play. They have a single first down, but I believe it's a first down. Now they do. That's going to be enough for a Bearcat first down. Ball's on the opposite end of the field. It's spotted at the Indian 21-yard line. 5.06 left to go in the third. 20-18. to 18. Indians up by two. The Indians defense trying to step in, stiffen up here. Bearcats first and 10 from the 20. 21. Giffen in the shotgun. To the left is Music. It's going to be a handoff there. It's got a lot of running room right up the middle. Puts the shoulder pad down. It's going to be a nice gain on first down, close to 10 yards as they spread the Indians out. Now that big line of scrimmage tries to take control of this game. Greenwood with a, a nine-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up second down and one. Gain of nine will be second one. We need to get some bright white paint for our lines. It might be hard to see where the football is. All I know is it's second and one. Ball's getting close to the 15-yard line. Giffen in the shotgun. Greenwood set to his right. Here comes the shotgun snap. 
Greenwood again cuts back up to the middle. They found something right up the middle. He's going to have a first down. It's going to be first and goal for the Bearcats. Somebody's down on the play back here, and that's Tristan Lee. He gets back up to his feet for the Bearcats. Big number 32. This is a physical football game. There's going to be a lot of bumps and bruises in the morning. In the morning by both teams. Indians lead by two, 20 to 18. Trying to hold on here. Four minutes left to go in the third. First and goal for the Bearcats. Seth Greenwood only had 12 yards in the first half. He's already had you know, here in the in the third quarter. We knew he was a handful by looking at all the stats. They're a very balanced team, and so are the Indians, and it's a battle here tonight. Shotgun formation in the pistols. Giffen set behind him this time is Greenwood. Uh, or, you know, back to pass. Got a pump and go. Got a man back there, and he overthrows him. Adam Albertini on the coverage. Noonan looped around the right-hand side with a little stop and go, and Adam Albertini was on the coverage just a little bit over Noonan's head. Ball's incomplete. It's going to be second and goal. Now bring up second down. I believe the ball's on about the 8-yard line, just inside the 10. Markers are on the far end of the field, and I can't hardly see a line down that far. We're going to call it second goal from the eight. One receiver, Noonan to the right, music to the left, Giffen in the shotgun, Greenwood set behind him on the second and goal. Here comes the shotgun snap. He's going to run the option to the right, trying to string it back. He's going to be, and he's going to be wrapped up by Colin Carlson. Good job by him. I almost thought that was it. I thought Greenwood, the reason I hesitated, it looked like he was almost going to stop and try to throw that ball possibly. No gain on the play. It's going to bring up third down and goal. Good job of the Indians stringing that option out to the right. I'm not too sure that wasn't the option pass as the ball was pitched backwards, so Griffin or uh, Greenwood could have threw that ball as there was a couple receivers going down the field. So third and goal, ball spotted at the eight. Two receivers wide to the right, Noonan, music. Setting the pistol is Giffen, to his right is Greenwood. Here comes the shotgun snap. Back to pass again, looking across the middle of the field. And it's going to be caught. Touchdown, Bearcats. Number 82, Jake Thompson, one of the big tight ends. Found an opening. Touchdown, Bearcats. And they go back out to a four-point lead over the Indians. 243 left to go in the third. Standing extra point. 24 to 20, 243 left to go here in the third quarter. Bearcats answer the two touchdowns by the Indians that give them the two-point lead and get down with the score of their own. The Indians made them earn it every step of the way. Noonan splits wide to the right on the extra point. Music to the left. Giffen in the shotgun. Greenwood set straight behind him. Here comes the snap. Motion from left to right is music. Going to run the option to the right. Now the option pass wide open is Noonan. Nobody out there. The point is good. 26 to 20. Bearcats lead by six. 243 left to go in the third. We'll be back after the 30 second timeout. This is St. Paul football on Hot 105. Get ready. KKLY, Genoo, Iola, Coffeeville. Number one for the hits. Here we go with Hot 105. A My Town Media Station. Farmers Bank is a full-service bank with small-town personal attention. They know you by name and are always glad to help you out. Offering 24-hour ATM and three banking locations in St. Paul, Walnut, and Hepler, Farmers Bank, member FDIC, is proud to help support the success that a small community can achieve with teamwork and determination. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back. We got a good ball game here. Bearcats retake the lead, twenty-six to twenty. So they answer. Haven't trailed very much this year, or if any this year, but they answered the call and take a six-point lead. Extra point was good. We're here for the Styles Fitness and more. Kyle Dawes ball teed up. Adam Albertini stands back at the goal line, about the one. Big run and start by Kyle Dawes. Albertini is going to sail into the end zone. Line drive kick sails into the end zone. It's going to be first and 10 for the Indians at their own 15-yard line. Indians need to step back in the game here and make some offense happen, keep the ball moving. First and 10 for the Indians back at their own 15-yard line. See if the Indians can answer the touchdown by the Bearcats. Doherty comes into the game. Pullman comes out. 
Jason Bourne comes in from the sideline with the play on the first and ten. Don't try to get too greedy. A lot of time left in this ball game. Just two forty-three left to go here in the third quarter. Bearcats up by six. Bearcat crowd trying to fire up their defense over two there. Receivers wide to the right for the Indians. Bourne in the shotgun by himself. Bourne in the shotgun. Low snap. Rolls to his right. Across the middle, knocked down as Pecco is trying to drag across the field on the drag pattern from the left side in. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Going to bring second down and 10 for the Indians. So that height on that defensive line got in the way. Bourne not able to get the ball through there. Second down and 10 at their own 15. 239 left to go here in the third. Bearcats lead by 626 to 20. Bearcats is up by as many as 12. Indians come back in the third quarter here and actually took a two point lead until the Bearcats just answered with a touchdown of their own. Doherty splits wide to the right, as well as Adam Albertini, born in the shotgun by himself, second down and 10 for the Indians. Here comes the snap. Blitz coming from the Bearcats. Long pass intended for Doherty. It's going to be over both everybody's head. Falls incomplete harmlessly. It's going to bring up a third down and 10 as Bourne loaded up, try to hit Doherty on the long pass. Went for the big one there on second down. Doherty down the middle. He's take a little off of that and let uh, Doherty the, run under it. Yeah, make the ref call a pass interference on them. We'll give Doherty a chance with his height to get up under that football. But Bourne just reared back through that as far as he could, and it was about three yards over the head of everybody. Third down and ten as the Bearcats try to get their sideline fired up. I'd like to say with no avail. 33 <laughs> left to go here in third. Bearcats up by six. Same set. Actually, Albertini set to his left in the pistol. Here's the snap. Hand off to Albertini on a halfback pass. And he loses the football. And he's going to fall on it, I believe, as Albertini. He tried to pump fake, and he dropped the ball. That was going to be a go on the end around to Bourne. He pitched it. He handed it to Albertini. He went to his left. Albertini was going to throw back to his left to Bourne. And when he went to pump fake, he came out of his hand. They could have called an incomplete pass, but he was trying to pull that down. It's going to be a fourth down and long. Spillbush is going to be pinned way deep in his own end zone here. Momentum back to the Bearcats. He's going to be standing close to his own out-of-bounds line. And it looks like the Bearcats are going to try to go for this. Good snap. And he gets the punt off barely, but it's a poor punt. It's going to be... First and 10 for the Bearcats. All the momentum in the world. Tough in a tough situation for Steelbush there. He barely got the punt off in his low punt, and it's going to be a either a first and goal for the Bearcats or first and 10 from just outside the 10-yard line. So <laughs> the Indians defense is really going to have to step up here. 146 left to go in the third, 26 to 20. The Indians trailed by as many as 12 in this game, so they able to fight back. Not a very good offensive possession there by the Indians. The Indians really need to try to cause a turnover to get momentum back in this ball game. First and ten, so the ball is outside of the ten yard line, just outside of the ten yard line. So big chance for the Bearcats to really take momentum in this game. One forty six left to go in the third. Indians trail twenty six to twenty. First and ten for the Bearcats. Shotgun formation is Giffen set to his right is Greenwood out wide to the left is Music. He's going to hand it off to Greenwood. Cuts back to the right. He's going to be wrapped up. He's going to get a nice gain on first down. Gain of four or five. He's going to bring up second down and call it six for the Bearcats. Down inside the ten to about the eight-yard line. Maybe the seven. Second six. 120 left to go here in the third. It's a chance for St. Paul if they can make a stop here. That would really be big for the defense. It was really neat trying to make a stop here. Second down and six. Bearcats in deep into Indian territory. In the shotgun is Giffen. And the coach calls a timeout. as He's jumping up and down from the sideline and calls a timeout. So it's Bearcat timeout. With that, we'll take a 30-second timeout. You're going to St. Paul football on Hot 105. St. Paul Tire and Lube, locally owned and operated, offers the small town convenience you love without the big city prices. They offer free pickup and drop off in St. Paul, so you're not left stranded while your vehicle is in the shop. They offer tire repair and also offer oil change and new tires. When you find yourself in need of new tires or an oil change and need to keep going, visit with St. Paul Tire and Lube, 620-449-2323. St. Paul Tire and Lube, proud supporters of the St. Paul Indians. 
Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, welcome back. Coming out of the timeout, Burling. Burling game with a second down and six. Our timeout sponsor is St. Paul Supermarket. Thanks to him for the, all your grocery needs. Get up to the St. Paul Market. I know they had their hand in putting together a Gally and James put together the highlight reel that's playing down against in the west end zone. Indian's defense really needs to step up here. Second down and six four. The Bearcats at the Indian eight. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set right behind him. Look for that sweet play to Greenwood. And they do. Nope, they're going to fake it. Roll out to his right. Throws back across the middle. Wide open from the tight end. Touchdown, Bearcats. Oh, Thompson again. They fake that pitch that worked so well, and he rolled out to his right. Thompson comes from the left tight end. He is wide open. Nobody covered him. Back up to a 12-point lead for Burlingame. They just need to keep their heads up. They've been in this position before. Good play ball call by Coach Slater. Take that pitch around to the right that Greenwood's had a lot of success with here in the second half. Roll back out to his it to the left. Roll back to his right. Get his tight end for the left-hand position. Three receivers wide to the right. I haven't seen this set yet. Giffen in the shotgun, pinning an extra point. Here comes the snap. Motion from right to left, and it's going to be a slip screen, and it dies for the end zone. Extra point is good. Barely gets into the end zone. Took forever from the right side judge to call it. So 34 to 20, 14 point lead. One minute left to go here in the third. That's how quick things can change here. St. Paul had all the momentum. They got that lead, and then just a couple of mental errors, really, is what it amounted to for St. Paul. And that quick Berlin game struck and took advantage of it. Now they're up again by 14. Indians no quit in them. Showed that last week against Osborne as they trailed in that game also. Came back for the last 27 answers. Got a lot of work to do here. 14-point lane lead for Berlin game. One minute left to go here in the third. Styles Fitness and more are kicked off sponsor. Let's see if the Indians can get their offense rolling here. Had back-to-back touchdowns, and that's been answered by Berlin game's back-to-back touchdown. And that time, the ball came out of Albertini's hands back inside his own 10 on a bump fake. Kind of put us in a situation of fourth and long. Goodwin's pin way back by his own end line to punt, just what you'd want if he was the other team, and did not get a good punt off. So, Berlin game, momentum in this ball game. So, I'll sit with some more. Here's our kickoff sponsor, Adam Albertini, back deep for the Indians. Moves up big from Albertini here. Driving kicks going to fly away through the end zone. Got to follow that one. As he is excited. And it's going to be first and 10 for the Indians from their own 15. St. Paul's had the advantage of having Alejandro Mate be able to kick that ball out of the end zone all season long, and now they're seeing how effective that can be on pinning you back deep in your own territory to start your drive. Bourne comes in from the sideline with the play, and he needs to try to sustain a good drive here. First and 10 from their own 15. Bearcats with momentum in this ball game. Back to the high formation. Carlson at fullback. Albertini at tailback. Bourne up under center. Here's the snap. Option. Albertini back behind him. Ball's on the ground. Finally picks it up. Gets around the man. Good job by Albertini making something out of nothing. That was totally dangerous on that. <laughs> Pitch play. It was open. If it had been a good pass, uh, pitch, Bourne would have had, or Albertini would have had a lot of green grass in front of him. He had to go back, pick that ball up. It's close to a first down for the Indians. So something unfortunate turns into something fortunate. It's a first down for the Indians. The ball knows the football spotted right at the 25. First and 10 for the Indians from their own 25. High formation. Carlson to fullback. Albertini at tailback. Born up under center. Pitch to Albertini around the left-hand side. Stretches it out. Gets around the ends. Nice seven-yard gain on first down. Now they're going to spot him out. Of, well, now they're walking up to the spot. Looks like a six or seven-yard gain. Seven-yard gain on the play. It's going to bring up second down and three. Indians trying to get to the edge a little bit with a little success here to start this drive after back-to-back touchdowns from Burlingame. Earlier in the quarter, they were spread out, running a lot of that passing offense with the receivers out. Now they've tightened things back down, going back to the run. Second and three for the Indians. Ball spotted across the 30 at the 31-yard line. High formation, no split back formation this time. Carlson and Albertini. Option to the left. Bourne's going to keep it. Stretches forward, close to a first down. Good job by Bourne running that option, running hard, stretching forward. 
going to be spotted at the 35, so it's going to be another first down for the Indians as they move the sticks. First and 10 for the Indians. That's what we need to happen. Keep moving in sticks. 38 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Indians. Ball at the 35. 34 to 20. Burning game up by 14. High formation. Carlson a fullback. Albertini a tailback. And off to Albertini. Left side. Might have that ball ripped away from him. Uh, hole closed up quick. Short gain on the play. Gain of one. Albertini trying to hit that hole hard. Second down and nine. And that's going to bring the third quarter to an end. Our third quarter score is going to be Burning Game 34, Indians 20. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Hi, I'm Kendall Gammon. You may know me as a Kansas City Chief, but I'm also a proud graduate of Pittsburgh State University. Pittsburgh State offers more than 200 degree programs, small class sizes, and tuition so affordable, it earned Pittsburgh State a top 10 ranking on Washington Monthly's collegiate best bang for your buck list. But don't take my word for it. Visit Pittsburgh State and see why there's nothing like being a gorilla. Learn more at pittstate.edu slash BA gorilla. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. 12 minutes left to go in this good football game. We're burning game has taken a 14-point lead, 34-20. to 20. Indians with the football to start this fourth quarter. Second down and eight. Ball spotted at their own 37-yard line. Fourth quarter, jet check time for the St. Paul Indians. Down by 14. That's something that's not impossible to overcome. Key here is to keep the ball moving down the field. Put some points on the board every time you get a chance. Try to take advantage while you're on defense. Maybe cause a turnover. Second down and eight for the Indians. You notice that the Bearcats D-backs playing about 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So they're not wanting to fight on that play-action pass. It should give the Indians maybe just a little bit more running room. Brennan Doherty back in the game. Splits wide to the left. Now we got a set run. Back out now. Kennedy, Adam Albertini to the right. Caleb Peck and Brennan Doherty to the left. Back to pass is born. Going to throw it across the middle. And stretching incomplete passes. Pekka was open going across the field, but Bourne just missed him. New set, put again by Coach Watry, as you see Keith Kennedy come in. Two receivers to the right and two to the left. Pekka was open, but just out of his diving hands. He's going to bring up a third down and eight. For the Indians, 11.54 left to go here and the fourth. Same set. Albertini and Kennedy split wide to the right. Pekka and Doherty wide to the left. Shotgun snap. And the pressure's born. He needs to get rid of it. He does. Doherty catching. He's going to be short, but he's crossed midfield. Or he's right at the marker where they spot it from now. It could be a first down for the Indians. And he is right on the 35. Very close to the first down. Spot he is right on 35. Should there be a first down, down, right? Yep. Yeah, because we started on the 15-yard line. Got almost exactly 10 yards every time. Nice pass and catch from Doherty. Kennedy comes out. Pullman goes in. Good pass and catch from Bourne to Doherty on the big third and eight, just with the doctor ordered for the Indians. First and ten for them in the Bearcat territory at the Bearcat 35. Doherty had that rush earlier on the end around. That's the first pass he's caught this game. Good job. Good composure by Bourne because there was a lot of pressure coming. Back to the eye formation. Carlson to fullback. Albertini at tailback. Into the neutral zone is going to be a penalty on the Bearcat. That's big number Tristan Lee jumped in there on a hard count by Bourne. It's going to give the Indians five yards. It's going to be set, or first and five. Ball at the 30-yard line. Yeah, five yards. Still first down. First and five. Ball at the 30. 11-27 left to go in the game. Indians trail by 14, 34 to 20. High formation. Carlson fullback. Albertini at tailback. Here comes the snap. Hand off to Albertini. Tries to cut back the middle. Breaks the tackle. Lets another tackle. He's going to have a first down. He's going to gain about seven. Good couple slip. Good moves by Albertini on that horizontal movement. Gives the Indians a first down. Now inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. That was a good hard run by Adam Albertini. Stayed low, drove his legs, fought through the traffic there, and made a nice game. You know, at some point, Coach Watcher's going to dial a play-action pass out of that. Look for Peckett from that left tight end position. Back into the eye again. Born up under center. Carlson a fullback. Albertini at tailback. Here comes the snap. 
There it is. Rolls out to his right. Needs to get rid of it. He slipped one tackle, but he ain't going to slip another one. He's stopped back behind the line. It's going to be a loss. He's going to lose about five. It's going to be second down and 15. Now the ball's backed up to the 28-yard line. You knew at some point that was coming. Bourne tried to fake it to the left, roll out to his right. And there was a lot of pressure coming from his right side. And as soon as he turned to the right, had two guys in his face, got around one, couldn't slip the second one. Second and 15, ball backed up to the 28-yard line. It's spread set again. Kennedy and Albertini to the right. Pekka and Doherty to the left. Born in the shotgun. Good snap. Rolls to his right. Throws across the middle of the field. Oh, almost a finger. Almost a circuit catch by Albertini. No flag on the play. Indian fans got their hands up in the air. A lot of contact. No flag. Indians don't get the call. It's going to bring up third and 15. Ball still sets at the 28-yard line. Indians wanted, the fans wanted the call, but I, I think it's just good defense. He put his hands on it until the ball was there. Just, that's good coverage. Almost a heck of a grab by Albertini. That was right off the center. Catch it. Third and 15, a big third down play for the Indians. And they are probably in four down territory. They don't have to get it all, but it'd be nice to get some of it back here. Same set. Two to the right, one to the left. And that time it's yeah. off high because he's into the neutral zone. So that's going to get five yards back. That will help. Albertini didn't move until the other team was in the neutral zone. Now the other side judge comes in from the opposite side, and he does have offsides against the Bearcats, which is the right call because they blew that dead. As it might have been Tristan Lee again got into the neutral zone. So it's going to yeah, be third down and 10. Team. Third and 10 instead of third and 15. So a good job by the Indians. Good job by Bourne on a hard count. We're going to call it third and 10. Ball spotted inside the 25 at the 23 yard line. Shotgun snap, slip screen to Doherty, keeps his snap. They're going to call him down. They get bounced on the ground. They're going to call it a catch okay. down. That was a flag on the opposite side this time, and this could be motion against the Indians this time. We'll see if they elect to take this penalty, which will be third and 15 or fourth and 10. Illegal shift on the Indians. We'll see if they take the flag. If they decline, it'll be fourth and 10. If they take it, it'll be third and 15. They're going to decline it and make it fourth and 10. At least that's what the captain is signaling. 10 11, left to go in the game, 34 to 20. So, big fourth and 10 for the Indians coming up. Well, they declined. How did we lose two yards? Well, he must have been behind the line of scrimmage when he caught the pass. No, it's a, oh, he declined that track. Yeah, sorry, declined. swap out. Yeah, he declined the flag, so there's a little bit of a loss on the play. Fourth and 11. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the left. Born in the shotgun. Line needs to give him some time to throw it. Four guys on three. He needs to throw it quick across the middle of the pecker. He catches it. Move. Five. Touchdown. <laughs> Caleb. Touchdown. That's the exact same fourth down play they ran last week against Osborne. Fourth and long. Caleb Pecker across the middle. Everybody coming for Berlin game, and they dumped it off the pecker again. Right Here across the middle from split out the left side. Touchdown, Indians. No clip this Indian team. Folks, that's three down linemen blocking four Bearcats on the rush. Bourne had to get rid of that. He held his composure, threw it right, a strike right to Pecker across the middle of the field. Pecker slipped one tackle about the five-yard line, got into the end zone. 34-26, to eight-point game. Here comes the important extra points. Take a long time in the huddle, or the Indians. They need to hustle up here. The count's going to be on. There it is. The count is on. Need to hustle up. They ain't going to make it. Give me the hustle. Yeah, it's going to be too late. And it was a quick count. But Indians take a lot of time to get those plays in. I don't know why it takes so long. So on the extra point, it's going to be a delay of game against the Indians. Going to back them up five yards. So instead of three yards, you're going to have eight yards to go, which you may not see be a huge thing. But if it was going to be a running play, eight-point lead for Burling game. 9.49 left to go in the game. 34-26. to 26, No quit this Indian team. Back-to-back scores by Burling game. Now motion from left to right. Becca double strong to the right. Born up under center. Pitches it to Albertini. He's going to drop back to pass it. Moves to his left. Goes back for Bourne. Catches it. Extra point. Good. They tried to run that play earlier is when Albertini lost it, but that time it worked. 34 to 28. Six-point ball game. 9.49 left to go in this game. We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. Let's take all football on Hot 105. 
Exchange Insurance Agency is a proud supporter of the St. Paul Indians. Give us a call, visit our website, or stop in to let us do the comparison shopping for you and get a free no-obligation quote. Offering all types of insurance, including auto, motorcycle, home, farm, crop, watercraft, life, and health, Medicare supplements, and all lines of commercial or business insurance. Serving the four-state area since 1964, Exchange Insurance in St. Paul is here to provide you with what you need, want, and should expect from your insurance agency. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Welcome back to Miles Field here in St. Paul. What a great game we have here. 34-28. to 28. Two great teams just duking it out right on the football field. That's the best all way to describe it. It's a slugfest. Styles fitting some more kickoff special. Andre Monte needs to get all of his boot in behind this one. Monte approaches. Drive and kick. There we go. Monte kicks it out of the back of the end zone. Touchback. Now the Indian defense needs to carry this momentum and try to get this football back, try to create a turnover, try to create something. Yeah, St. Paul defense got an opportunity here if they can make a stop, especially if they can get a turnover. A lot of time left in this game, 9.49 left to go, which is forever in an eight-man game. Six-point lead for the Bearcats. The first and ten for the Bearcats from their own 15. Up the line of scrimmage they come. In the shotgun is Giffen. Up behind him is Greenwood. To the right is Noonan. To the left is Music. Here comes the shotgun snap. Back to pass. And Giffen looking across the middle. Now rolls to his left. Got a little runner room. Spielberg tries to crowd him out there. Knocks him out of bounds. He's knocked out of bounds. Good job by Spielbush from the linebacker position. Holding him to a two or three yard gain. Looks like a gain of three. Second down and seven. Good job by the secondary. Secondary staying on the Bearcats receiver. Giffen see the little room around the left side. Gains. Now they're going to spot it for about a four yard gain. Second down and six. Ball just short of the 20. 9.42 left to go in the game. Bearcats up by six. Giffen in the shotgun. Now music in the slot to the right. Greenwood set behind Giffen in the pistol. This is where they run that sweep out of. They run the option to the left. Shove the pass across the middle. And it's going to be bottled up by Colin Colson and Grant Hutcherson for no gain on the play. That's one of us. Uh, got to say this quiet, Mike, because there's a little coach right down there. We haven't seen that shovel pass from Colin, to Colin Carlson yet, which is one of my favorite plays by the Indians. They run a shovel pass their own. Third down and seven for the Bearcats, pinned back at their own 19-yard line. What a ball game we have here. I'm going to be able to talk for a week. Well, hopefully. When we win, I'll be able to <laughs> you talk. you got a week to week. recover. Let's hope you have to use it. I do, too. Be what back. a ball game. 34-28 Indians has just showed all the heart in the world. Hope they can pull this out. Third and seven for the Bearcats. Shotgun. Back to pass is given. Looking across the middle, and it's incomplete. Indians defense holds. Pass is intended. Guess who? Big number 82, Thompson. So it's going to be a fourth and seven from their own 19 as Greenwood back in front formation. There's the opportunity the Indians need now. Don't make any mistakes here. If the ball's not catchable, this is effective to get away from it. Knock on wood. Let's have a good return. Let them make the mistake. Good snap. No pressure. Good punt this time. Albertini's got to take it on the bounce, and he does by the fingertips, 30. Up to the 35, puts a move on, out of bounds. Good return. Still bush. Still bush with a good 85. <laughs> made a good block. Five jolly is football. That's what happens. St. Paul's offense takes the field. Good field position off of the good defense put together by the Indians. Looks like the Indians might be going to do this spread again. They're sending Keaton Kennedy and Brendan Doherty in, born in the shotgun. I'd like to see him get these plays in here, get these. Not push the clock so much. They have a tendency to use all of that 45 second clock. Everybody take a deep breath now. First and 10 for the Indians. Ball at their own 37 yard line. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. This is risky because it's three guys blocking four. Born needs to get this off quick. And it is. Slip screen to Doherty. Tries to put the move on. Puts a short pass. A good hard run. Good, hard run by Doherty. He's going to be a five-yard gain on the play. He puts his shoulder pad down. Brendan Doherty showing some <laughs> physicality in the game. Second down, let's call it a gain of four, second and six. Eight twenty-five, let's go in the game. Indians trail by six with possession of the football into Bearcat territory by about a yard. Second and six from the Bearcat, 39. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. 
Keith Kennedy holding his hands up like he don't know what the play is. Born in the pistol all by himself. He's going to run it to himself on the left-hand side. Back to the middle he goes. Born's going to have a first down. Good hard run off the left-hand side. Spielbush needs to be careful. No flag. I don't see any flag on the play. First and ten for the Indians. Spielbush might have had a little jersey. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. He kept his hands inside there. He let go when he was supposed to. First and ten. Ball down to the 30. All kinds of time in the game. Eight minutes left to go. Indians trail by six. I think you have a little jersey as long as you don't impede the defender. Two to the right, two to the left. Same set. Born in the shotgun. Going to throw a slip screen off this side to Albertini, and he's wrapped up quick. Good tackle that time made by Greenwood on Albertini, but he's going to gain about four. Let's call it a gain of three. He's going to be second and seven. Ball now inside the 30, down to the 27-yard line. Second and seven for the Indians. 7.38 left to go in the game. They trail by six. Trying to suck these D-backs in, get them closer to the line of scrimmage with these little quick hitter passes. Same set. Two to the right, two to the left. Born in the shotgun by himself. Good snap. Born's going to keep it. Cuts back up the middle. Puts the shoulder pad down. Hardly know where to go. Then big lineman doing a good job. He's going to gain two or three on the play. Good job by Brave and Born. He's going to bring up a big third down and five. I like this set and mixing it up, but I'd like to see the Indians go back into their eye formation and try to get Albertini to the edge running that option. Take third down and five. Ball at the 25. It is just nearly impossible to see a down marker or a line or anything. Two to the right, two to the left. Third and five. Born in the shotgun. Back to pass. Looking across to the left. Throws it late. He's hit when he's hit. And it's going to be kicked off in the end zone and a flag on the play. It's going to be pass interference. No, it's going to be off. I'm not sure what it is. Pass interference yeah. against the offense. So it's going to be a touchback for the Bearcats because the ball's picked off. Pass interference on the offense. Ball was in the air. He's supposed to have a right to the football, but he did stick his arms out. 640 left to go in the game. Bearcats are going to take over first and 10 from their own 15 as it was in the end zone. Now they're going to discuss it. We'll talk about where to assess the penalty probably. Well, if they accept the penalty, it resulted in an interception. So... It resulted in an interception in the end zone, so it should be a touchback. But now they're getting together, discussing whether or not all of them's getting together. I don't know what about. White Hat and everybody's discussing whether or not something. So we'll see what the call is. Pass interference against the offense. Pass interference against the defense. Off the setting, which gives the Indians a ball back. Fourth and five. You That's a sixth play in the game. Fourth play. and five. The Indians need to take advantage of this as they get together, and they call it on both. And I'm not too sure I wasn't the right call, folks, because the ball was in the air. Doherty was trying to run to get the ball, and both of them pushed off of one another trying to get to that football. That is huge. So they replay third down. Excuse me, third and five. I was thinking it was fourth, but it, we'll replay the down. Third and five. Ball spots is 25, so there's a break for the Indians. It could have resulted in a turnover. A lot of time left. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Same set. So Squatcher going to stay in this set. Third and five. Here comes the pressure. Bourne rolls to his left. Take He's off. running. Third, he makes the block. It's going to be a first down. More. Jordan, uh, Bourne keeps his feet. Good job as they blow him out of bounds. Heck of a run by Bourne. And it's going to be a first down for the Indians. Down to, I think, inside the 15, Mike. I think you're right. Well, he gained about nine yards on that play. Just out of the outstretched horns is Greenwood. Coming from that. He's coming stunting from that linebacker position because that's the, the fourth uh, lineman on the three defenders. All that's left in on that set for the Indians, the block is the center and two guards. Yeah. Hutcherson, Albertini, and Silbush, I believe. Now they're back into the eye. Born up under center. Carlson at fullback. Albertini at tailback. Here's the snap. Option to the left. Born, or gives it to Carlson. Nice positive yardage on first down as he ran it to the left. As Born was hit hard too then. He's going to bring up second down. and Let's see what he gained. Gained about Seems like three. all our plans been on, which is good. That's our end zone, but we're down on the other end of football. Second down and six for the Indians. The ball outside the 10-yard line, inside the 15. We're going to call it the 12. Second six, eye formation. Carlson, the pullback, Albertini, a tailback. 
Going up the center. Pitch to Albertini. Got a lot of pressure no. out there. Tried to hurl a guy. No gain on the play. Maybe a loss on the play. 5.54 left to go in the game. Should bring up a big third down for the Indians. He may have lost one. Now all the Indians back up. Is there a flag on the play? I don't see no flag. Maybe they're just backing up to huddle up. Oh, there is a flag on the play. Right at the ball. Yes. It's going to be a holding against the Indians. That hurts. It's going to replay second down. They're going to take the yard each. It'll replay second down. Back to Indians. Clear back to the 23-yard line. Second down and call it 20. Ball at 23. 554 left to go in the game. Indians trail by six. Need, don't need to get it all back. Just need to get part of it back. Kennedy and Albertini to the left. Pekka and Doherty to the right. Born in the shotgun by himself. Doherty on the slip screen to Albertini. Tries to put a move on. Up the middle he goes. Breaks one tackle. Dies forward almost. Slipped two tackles. Positive yardage back. It's going to bring up a big third down and call it 11 for the Indians. Ball spotted back in at the 16-yard line, right at the 15-yard line. So a third and 11. Indians need to get inside the five. About four to be 30. Well, please. Indians going to get right at the five-yard line for a first down. Third and 11 for the Indians. Same set. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Born in the shotgun. 521 left to go in the game. Here's a snap. Good snap. Born's got a little time. Now he's going to have to run with it. Tries to break a tackle, but he's going to be sacked for no gain. Yeah, that pocket's just no collapsing gain. on him there. He's going to bring up the big fourth down and 11. No gain on the play. Not a sack. Just no gain as uh, Born tried to rush. Fourth and 11, and the Indians are going to call a timeout. We're going to take a timeout to catch our bread. 34 to 28, a big fourth down play coming up for the Indians. Fourth and 11 from their own 16. We'll be back after this 30 second timeout. Let's St. Paul football on Hot 105. Jerry and Kevin Winter, along with the entire crew at KW Trucking, are proud to bring you this broadcast of the St. Paul Indians. KW Trucking specializes in heavy equipment and heavy truck repair, late model rebuilding, and body work from large trucks down to cars. They also have a full-service machine shop and a great selection of both used cars and trucks. See Jerry or Kevin at KW Trucking or call 449-2763. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, folks, we got a heck of a ball game here. Fourth down and 11 for the Indians. Back at their own 16-yard line. Need to get to about the six, inside the six for a first down. Five minutes left to go in the game. 34 to 28. A good drive put together by the Indians, irregardless. Even if they don't make this, the ball game ain't nowhere near from over. That's the first time out. Taken by the second by the Indians in the second half. Two receivers wide to the right, two to the left. Born in the shotgun. Kennedy and Albertini to the left. Pekka and Doherty to the right. Back to pass. They just rushed three this time. Looking. Now he throws yeah. the ball now. Looking again. Throws it low. There's no oh, Albertini. What is it? Calling down. Is he down inside? Touchdown! Indians! Touchdown! Adam Albertini just ties this ball there. I thought they were going to spot him inside the five at the one. Now they call it a touchdown. That was from... High ball game, folks. 450 left to go in this game. 34 to 34. From 19 yards out. Fourth down again. Those fourth down touchdowns. I thought I thought he almost looked like the ball come loose, and he's right at the pylon. It took him forever to call what it was. I knew it was either going to be first and goal. I'm sorry for the delay, but... It's clear on the other end of the field. Yeah, but Indians exactly left to try to take a two-point lead. Same set. Two receivers to the right. Two to the left. 34 to 34. 450 left to go in this game. Bourne in the shotgun. Rolls to his right. Goes across the middle. And a knockdown incomplete. Wouldn't expect anything less out of this, folks. Tie ball game. 34 to 34. 450 left to go in the game. Well, we're going to stick right here. What a ball game, Mike. Yeah, it's fun to watch. I'm trying to get caught up here on the on the stat sheet before I get too far behind. This is something else. This is exactly right what you said, which is what you'd expect. Here we are, four, almost five minutes left in this ball game. Winner goes to the state championship game. It's been back and forth, all basically all Burling game up until the middle of the third quarter when St. Paul took the lead, then lost. It was down by 14. Now they've tied the ball game up again at 34 points each. This is a, a great eight-man football game. This is where the coach 
goes to that one play that you practice twice yeah, the one and you draw it in the sandbox. That's right. You're going to see everything with 450 minutes. It's going to get crazy now, game. folks. We're flex four minutes. We're liable to see anything out here. Alejandro Monte tees the ball up in style. Fitness and some more. Our score is 24 to 24. What heart? Shows by the 34 Indians. 34 to 34. 34 to 34 close excuse enough. me. <laughs> the Indians come back from a 14 point deficit. They have scored the last 14. Monte needs to kick this clear through the upright. He needs to kick this thing out to the five mile corner. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, my sentiments exactly. He winds up high, drive and kick, and it is going to sell into the end zone. It's going to pin the Bearcats back first and 10 from their own 15. All right, defense. One more time. Stuck up to the plate for us. 450 left to go in the game. A lot of time. No mistakes. Control the ball now. The name of this game. 34 to 34. And we got to. We got to realize 4:50 left to go in the game, Mike. Both teams with a weapon. I was just a thinking the exact weapon. same thing as you are. So all I got to do is get the field goal range. One receiver to the left, one to the right. Giffen has played flawless to this part. Point Greenwood in the sh- uh, next to him. Back to pass. Goes to his left. Pass is caught. Tackle him out there on Noonan, but he's going to gain seven yards, six or seven yards. Cross the twenty. Up to the 23, called a gain of seven, second down and three. Indians defender are going to have to step up and make a play here, second down and a long three. Yeah, we're all cautious. About the 21 and a half yard line. we cautious here. Noonan slips wide to the left, and so does Music in the shotgun. Is Giffen to his right is Greenwood. Motion from right to left, back to pass. Looks across the middle, got tight end, open again. And he catches it. That's a, oh, oh, oh it's down. Ball's on the ground. They're going to call him down. Oh, my. That's Luckily, they the call him down, but it's gonna, they're going to call it a catch. And then the ball's on the ground. So it's going to be a first and 10 for the Bearcats up to the 38-yard line. He just caught that on his fingertips. Pekka was on the coverage. Pekka wrapped him up, threw him down. And the ball come loose, but they said it was after he hit contact on the ground. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball on the 39. Wind's blowing out of the south. Across wind. First and 10 for the Bearcats. In the shotgun is Giffen. Set behind him in lone set is Greenwood. Two, receive, two slots to the left. Here comes the snap. Good snap. It runs the pitch. Up the middle. Greenwood cuts back to the middle. He's going to be wrapped up. He's going to have a nice six-yard gain on the play. And he's going to try to rip that football out when he's standing straight up and down. 338 left to go in this ball game. Second down and seven. Seven yard or second down and three. Seven yard gain for Greenwood. Second and three for the Bearcats. Ball at 30, just outside the Indian 35-yard line. Clock running at 320. So Right now, the clock is not the Indians' friend. Well, they need to stop. They need to turn over. Third down and, or second down and three. In the shotgun is Giffen. He's going to hand it to Greenwood right up the middle. He's going to be wrapped up by Big Anthony Albertini. Albertini gets in there when he needs to, the big senior. What a battle he's putting up. Third down and call it six now. It's a two yard, three yard loss on the play. Ball now spotted at the 37 and a half yard line. 2.46 left to go in the game. Third down and six. Probably four down territory for the Bearcats. You get your senior leadership there, stepping up to make a big play. His motor never quits running. He needs to make two more in a row here to get the Indians' offense a shot to win this. 34 34, 2.30 left to go. Two, a receiver to the right, to the left. Giffen in the shotgun. Now motion is music. Back to pass. Not much pressure. Cross the middle, and the incomplete is the play. It's going to bring a fourth down and six. See what they elect to do on here? fourth and six from your own you 38-yard back, yard line. You've about got to punt it in this situation, Dan. Two part kick a field goal. I'm not sure Coach Watrick would. Uh, I'm not sure Coach Watrick would. But, uh, has to call timeout here. 218 left to go in the game, 34 to 34. What the problem is, if you don't make this, the Indians don't have to go very far for a first right. round. So, I mean, to get in field goal position. Mm-hmm. They're going for it. Here They're we going go. to go for it. Fourth down and seven. Either that or they're going to try to draw the Indians off sides here. In the shotgun. They're going to run it. Get them back to pass. Pressure, screen Great. pass. Newman, drops up. No game on the call. Adam Albertini wrapped up Newton on that screenplay. It's worked twice. It didn't work that time. 
Indians football. Noonan's down on the field. Hope he's all right. Yeah, he's over backwards there a little bit. Yeah, Noonan's trying to walk it out. You can tell he got bent over backwards. The lower back's probably a little stiff. That was a good hit by Adam, though. Good play. Come on, Mike. <laughs> Two thirteen left to go in this game. Thirty-four to thirty-four. Well, and I'm not the coach, but here's what I would do, Dan: keep that ball on the ground, control the clock. Get that thing moving down he's the got, Well, he's going to run that spread offense, Mike. He's got we'll the spread team spread. in there. Okay. And so I'm, I'm not going to question anymore. Two Me receivers either. to the right is Peckham, Doherty. Two Win to the, the left Play is Kennedy game, and Albertini. Born in the shotgun. First and ten for the Indians. Ball at their own 39. Low snap. Born gets it. Locked up in the air. And it falls incomplete. Good job by the defense getting their hands up in the air. That was intended a short pass for Caleb Pekka on a little screen. Second down and ten. What a ball game, folks. You play to win the game. That's all there is to it. Now the Indians are going to go back into that high formation set as they run Pullman and Carlson back in the game. 2.08 left to go in the game. 34-34. to 34. Clock stopped on the incomplete pass. Let's get the play in. Second down and 10 for the Indians as they huddle up. Don't up to the line of scrimmage they come. Into the eye. Carlson a pullback. Albertini a tailback. Born up under center. Here comes the snap. Pitch to Albertini, left side, cuts back to the middle, cuts to the right side, cuts to the middle, first down in the line. That's it. 20, 15, one more to beat. Oh, he almost made it. One long by Albertini, in there, five long line, first and goal, Indians. First and goal for the Indians. Albertini inside the five yard line, save and tackle by Giffen, that's Montana Giffen, the junior. 34 to 34, under two minutes to go. First and goal from the Indians. What a run by Albertini. 37 yard run by Adam Albertini. I thought he was going to break and get there. Started to his left, went back to his right. First and goal for the Indians. Indian crowd up on their feet. Everybody in the end zone, on that end zone. High formation. Born up under center. Carlson a fullback. Albertini a tailback. Here comes the staff. Option. He's in. Carlson. Inside the five. Touchdown. Touchdown, Indians! Need these extra points, Dan. A minute and 34 seconds left. You've got to have these extra points there. Indians lead 40 to 34 by six with 134 left to go in this football game. Morn comes in from the sideline with the play. I can't always stand still, Mike. They can't stand still. they got to get the six point. I don't know what Coach Watrick is hollering about, but he's hollering at something. Now he's calling my time. Coach Watrick is wanting on the left hash, or wanted on the hash, and he couldn't get the, couldn't get him to spot it. Now he's wanting it on the right. Maybe he's wanting it right in the center. Yeah, he's wanting it right in the center. The Indians are going to line up to go for two. 30, 40 to 34, Indians up by six. That's 18 unanswered. 18. How many unanswered? Like three touchdowns by the Indians unanswered. Yeah. High formation. Pitch to Albertini. Get in. Trying to get to the corner. Put the shoulder pass get down. Get no good. Just short of the end zone is Adam Albertini. It wasn't from lack of trying, folks. He put his shoulder pad down and ran hard. 134 left to go in the ball game. 40 to 34. Indians lead by six. Well, here it is. A minute and 34 seconds left. It's all down to the defense here. St. Paul trying to make their way into a state championship football game in Newton next Saturday at 11 o'clock. Or one thing better about playing the week before Thanksgiving, that's playing the weekend after. You bet that's right. Indians defense are going to have to do it one more time against this Bearcat offense. Alejandro really needs to put the foot into this thing. Just pin them back deep. Everybody do their job. You know they got to score. Bearcat. And it also takes their kicker out of the game. Field goal won't do it. Let's see how this goes with Alejandro lined up for the big kick. Bearcat with two timeouts left to go. So a lot of time for this potent offense. Alejandro swings his arm. Styles Fitness and more kickoff sponsor. Alejandro Monte with the ball teed up. Black kick. Gonna be, he's on his knee. He's got to be down down there. He was on his knee when he picked up the football. Noonan returns the ball up to the 20. I don't understand that, how he yeah. can't be down when he's on the one-yard line trying to pick the football up. 
I guess because he didn't have it picked up yet, but either way, it's going to be first and 10, ball at their own 19 yard line. You got it. Stay composed here, Mike. Yeah, keep your composure, Dan. <laughs> Get a little excited. We can hold out another minute and 26 seconds. It's going to go one way or the other here. We'll find out soon enough. In his defense, takes the field. Now Brendan Doherty in the game back deep. Brendan Doherty playing center field back here. First and 10 for the Bearcats. Ball at their own 19. Two receivers to the right. Giffen in the shotgun. Greenwood set to his right. In the pistol is Giffen. Good snap. Back to pass. Looks to the left. It's incomplete, intended for Noonan. That'll stop the clock. Second and 10. 122 left to go in the game. Indians lead by six. You know, Griff, the Giffen's done such a good job and been so effective. If he was going to have a cold slump, now would be a good time for it for the Indians. Second and 10 for the Bearcats at their own 19-yard line. 122 left to go in the game. 40 to 34, Indians up by six. One receiver is Noonan to the right. To the left is music. In the shot, in the pistol is Giffen. Set to his right is Greenwood. Back to pass. Got a lot of time. Throws it to the left, and it's low and incomplete. Intended for music. It's going to bring up third down and 10. 117 left to go in the game. Bearcats, two timeouts. Two timeouts. Two left. more plays, Indians. Two more plays. Don't get too excited yet. You got to play. You got to finish this game. Third down and 10 from their own 19. You know it's four down territory. Trailing by six. So. Third down really don't mean anything. Third and ten. Doherty standing back way past midfield. Now he scoots up a little bit from that free safety position. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Third down and ten. Giffen in the shotgun. No pressure. Looks, looks, looks. Now he rolls to his right. There's a hole. Nobody calls it. Goes back to his left. You unplugged this, Mike. I didn't unplug it. You're the one jumping. I don't know what you did. I didn't do anything. You was jumping and you pulled the lid off the table. I didn't do nothing. Is the power cord? Hey, look at the end of this. Is it unplugged from that? Is it unplugged from the wall? Yeah. Hello, test one, two, three. We're plugged in. Are you there? Are we? Oh my goodness, Mike. Hey, by the way, Caleb Peckett intercepted that pass and he just took a knee or no, it's one oh six left to go. We had a man. I apologize. Here, folks. That was all that, Dano. That was a knock the box on the floor. One oh six left to go in this game. Caleb Peckett just intercepted the given pass. So the Indians have the football second and ten as they take a knee. Oh my goodness. I hope we're back on everybody. I apologize. I yeah. I, I'm blaming on Mike. He's blaming on me. <laughs> St. Paul lips to return the state championship game. 106 left to go in this game, and it looks like the Indians are going to hold off these Bearcats. What an unbelievable heart and football game put together. Mike, we got to come over with the player of the game. Oh, my. The Indians oh, go. hey, my nine, favorite nine, formation nine. in the world, victory formation. No, he's going to give it to Albertini. He runs up the middle. Bearcat had two timeouts. So we got to settle down here because they had two timeouts. Timeouts by the Bearcats. It's going to be third down. That is the Bearcat last timeout. I don't even know what I'm going to be in, Dan. Off the Indians. And you're blaming that on me. And you're standing on my cord. How can I knock that off? I got a 10 foot cord hooked onto me. I'm not going to fight, Mike. I'm excited. The Indians. This, this game ain't over. Oh, my. Oh, everybody's telling me to calm down. Yep, Dan's about to have a big one out here. <laughs> uh, I wonder if Mitch Holt is ever get to You know ball. what? I've heard him get excited, too. I think he's doing a fine job, Dan. Oh, I'm uh, glad to be up here with you. It's an exciting yeah. time. Right. Well, stay professional here. Third down <laughs> and seven for the Indians. I'm not sure what happened. All I know is the box ended up on the ground. What a play by Caleb Pekka. Caleb, Caleb Pekka stepped in and picked that ball off. This is third and eight. The Bearcats have used both their timeouts. 59 seconds left to go in the game. 
40 to 34. So the Indians are probably go ahead. Now they're in victory formation. And that, that it should be offside. The big lineman tried to jump in there and slap that football away. It's going to be encroachment against the Bearcats. Take the, take the penalty because one more first down and you sure got a ball game. It's, good. it's, set, it's third and eight, so now it's third and two. No, it's going to be on the Indians. How did that happen? False start on the Indians. Yeah, false start against the Indians. So that's going to make it third down and 11. 58 seconds left to go. Indians up by six. Good snap here. Grant Hutcherson comes up over the football. Braven Bourne up under center. Now they stop it. Now they're going to try to put one more second left on the clock because I believe there was 59 seconds. Yeah, there was 59, 59 seconds. So they scored there. There it is. They were good to go. Third down and 11. And now the Indians are going to huddle up. Third and 11 for the Indians. Ball sets outside the 16 at the 17-yard line. I'm sorry for all that, folks. <laughs> Probably was knocked off the air and the volume was just turned down. Somehow the box in on the ground. Mike's playing on me. Braven Bourne's going to run a play off the left-hand side. He's got some running room. Stretch out, stay in bounds. And he does stay in bounds. And the clock stays running. 52, 51, 50. It's going to be a big fourth down play for the Indians. Forty-two seconds, clock running. Big fourth and seven. He gained five. He gained the panel the yardage back. The ball is down to thirty-one seconds thirty. And Alejandro Monte's got a key kicking tee in his hand. We'll see what they like to do. Coach Walker probably got to call a timeout. Ooh, I don't know what I would do. 19, 18, 17, because you do not want to get a field goal blocked. 15 seconds left to go. Coach Walker calls a timeout. The Indians, fourth and seven, so this game ain't over. I think you run a wide play to the outside, some kind of a sweeper. I wouldn't even pitch it. Yeah, but can you take 15 seconds off the clock? that's the thing. I'm not too sure. I just don't run it and then put two free safeties back deep. They don't have any timeouts. They have to go the length of the football field. And hope that your Indians defense. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm doing a lot of squeezing. I'm a bit excited. <laughs> Forty to thirty-four, Indians lead by six. Fifteen seconds away from going to the state championship game in Newton, Kansas. Last, can make it through this last check. Hoxie will lead. They're going to line up for a field goal. All hundred miles away with all in his hands. The, they might fake it. The ball is at the ten, so it's going to be spotted at. He backs up a little seven. deeper. 10, 17, 27. Get <laughs> on his way! Good! Monte! Three for three! Alejandro Monte gives the Indians a nine point lead with 11 seconds left to go in this ball game. Are you kidding me? That was a 37 yard field goal, Dan. Are you kidding me? There's a saying for that young man. He's three for three. Folks, do you know how long it's been since the Indians has kicked a field goal? And in the playoffs alone, he is three for three from field goal land. Coach Watrick is on his way after 11 more seconds to state championship game. Last check, Hoxie led against Spearville. Well, we ought to have a quite a KW Trucking post game show, I think. Dan. Holy smokes! Yeah, I got it. I'll be if we can make it 11 more seconds after this kickoff. Coach Watrick screaming at the kickoff team. I just I'm have all that kick that that, thing right. I'd have him kick that dude as far as he could possibly kick it. Nine point lead. <laughs> uh, Alejandro Mate, three for three. Three field goals in the last three games, right? Mike wants to get Central you are Bird. Exactly right. One last week to give the Indians eleven point lead and tonight to give the Indians a nine point. The Indians have scored. You're going to have to run down the score, but they've scored. They've come back in the fourth quarter and scored three unanswered touchdowns. And a field goal. And a field goal. And with a much-needed turnover against this great Berlin game with all these seniors on the team, Mate has the ball teed up. He puts his foot into it, and it's going to fly clear through the back of the end zone. You can tell he's all jacked up. <laughs> 23 unanswered points here to finish 23. the game. 23. Indians game. trailed by 14 and have scored 23 in the fourth quarter. Indians trailed by 14 with... In a, at the end of the third quarter, like two minutes yeah, left to go yeah, in the third. Late in the third quarter. 
time. What an exciting time for St. Paul as they will you know, most they probably lost last year and we talked about it before the they game. They are gonna advance the oh, loss man. against this exact yeah. same Burling game team. The Indians are on a roll with back to back upsets last week against Osborne. They're gonna call it upset. We really don't. Greenwood's gonna run it to the left. Cuts back to the middle, still running hard, and he's down with four seconds left to go. Nope, he got out of bounds. Looks like something fucked. So three seconds left, 43-34, to nine-point lead for the St. Paul Indians in a sub-state game. I'm Looking not, to move on to Newton in next three Saturday. Seconds, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, Dan, in three seconds, I'm not moving my feet. <laughs> oh, heck, I don't... Well, that is going to be the ball game. St. Paul, believe it or not, Coach Walker, St. Paul Indians, beat the undefeated Bearcats of Bowling Game in advance to the state championship game next week. And I'll try to get you who they played during the first game. The last check, Hoxie led big. Not big, but Hoxie led. It's going to be a happy Thanksgiving in St. Paul, I can tell you that. It's just really something else. Holy smokes with a ball game. 43-34, to 34, final score. Indians win by nine. I guarantee you, everybody that's here got the money's worth on admission. That's really something else. Everybody's going to be excited this week in St. Paul. I'll tell you what, they are on a run. They got hot at the right time. We knew they could play better. And they, in the last three weeks defensively, Mike, they have played outstanding. Yes, they have. I mean outstanding. You couldn't ask for anything better on defense. And you know it's got to be a dejected Berlin game team. This year was supposed to be their year with 13 returning starters. Got ousted by Osborne, the defending champs of last year. What a heart showed by the Indians. Mike and I are going to get our composure here. Final score, 43-34. We'll be back with our KW Trucking post-game show after this two-minute timeout. This is St. Paul football on Hot 105. We can't hear you. Is that two minutes? I don't even know if I choose to. Oh, we're at commercial. The Exchange State Bank is proud to be a member of the St. Paul community. The Exchange State Bank has served the area since 1914 and is committed to go the distance for you. A full-service bank, they offer savings, checking accounts, loan certificates of deposit, and more. They also offer competitive rates on loans and investments, all while giving you the kind of personal service you won't find at bigger institutions. Visit with Bob Conifer at Exchange State Bank in St. Paul, member FDIC, proud sponsor of the St. Paul Indians. St. Paul Tire and Lube, locally owned and operated, offers the small town convenience you love without the big city prices. They offer free pickup and drop off in St. Paul, so you're not left stranded while your vehicle is in the shop. They offer tire repair and also offer oil change and new tires. When you find yourself in need of new tires or an oil change and need to keep going, visit with St. Paul Tire and Lube, 620-449-2323. St. Paul Tire and Lube, proud supporters of the St. Paul Indians. Prairie Mission Retirement Village in St. Paul provides services to people in their retirement years. Prairie Mission meets a wide range of needs from health care to assisted living and independent living apartments to elderly daycare services, including transportation. With our 7 to 7 dining, residents get up when they desire, eat when and what they want, and continue to live a full and happy life. Your family deserves the best in retirement care, so give Prairie Mission Retirement Village a call today for more information at 620-449-2400 or visit them at 242 Carroll Street in St. Paul. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports. Hot 105. Well, welcome back to Miles Field here where St. Paul comes out victorious by nine and advances state stamp, stamp, championship. <laughs> that game talk. State championship game 
and advance to play the Indians of Hoxie next week, who defeated Spearville. So here we go, Mike. Two 10 and 1 teams moving into state championship game. They both unseated. Spearville was undefeated on the night, and so was the Bearcats at Burlingame. The Indians took care of the Bearcats. Hoxie took care of Spearville. Well, I and mean, you know what else? They both were underdogs coming into those games, so you've got two underdogs now playing next week for the state championship in eight man Division One. You can't ask for any more excitement than what we saw here. Uh, you know, this game back and forth in St. Paul. You just can't say enough about that St. Paul defense. But overall, as a team, you can't say enough about them with the courage that they show and the strength and, and just the way they don't ever give up no matter what. Here they are. They had a chance where they could have given up when they were down by 14. But no, last week and this week both came back from behind in the second half and behind by double digits, no less. You just can't ask for any more on it. And, you know, they deserve to go. It was two good teams tonight, but I think the best team won. I tell you what, the Indians couldn't have got hotter at any better time. I apologize. When <laughs> Caleb Pecking intercepted that football, we're not I'll sure what happened. Claim. We're not, not sure. sure what happened. Anyway, we thought we, we had disrupted the whole thing. Right. Instead, the volume was just turned down, and yep. it took us a while to figure it out. Because we anyway, apologize if you, that screwed everything up. It was an exciting time. I need to we quiet down a little bit and just call the game. But it was an exciting game, so you know what? I'll take it. It's an injury victory. You game, bet right? you. So we're here at the KW Trucking Post Game Show. With D-Rail Commodity Player of the Game. We're going to go with Caleb Pekka. With the D-Rail Commodity Player of the Game, I tell you what, in the last two weeks, him and Bourne has just been like oh, that. Yeah, he's good. I mean, not just offensively, but Caleb Peck defensively played well. The Indians' defense deserve all the slaps on the back they can get yeah. because they have just played lights out the last two weeks especially. I'm not good enough to keep the defensive stats, but the tackles, especially the solo tackles tonight by Peck along with – Two touchdown receptions, 127 yards receiving. And not only were they just receiving yards, but they were key catches at key times. And he was in traffic. You know, Bourne, a lot of credit to Bourne. He put the ball out there for Pekka. But just an overall game, i got to give my player of the game to Caleb Pekka. Then. I do, too. And i got to give kudos. We both want to give kudos to Alejandro Monte. I, you, I tell yeah. you what, he's given the Indians a two-touchdown score lead with – under two minutes to go well, today, obviously, was with, uh, what, 11 seconds left to go. But either way, he's kicked a field goal. Hasn't missed one in a year, three for three, and what a weapon. So the special teams, the player of the game, or the, the special teams advantage ends up going to Alejandro Mate and the St. Paul Indians as they advance to the state championship game at 11 o'clock next week. We're going to take another one-minute timeout. We'll come back from that one-minute break. Mike will have the final stats for us, and we'll get you set for next week's matchup between the Hawks and the Indians. We'll be back after this one-minute timeout. You're listening to St. Paul Football on Hot 105. Richie's Drug Store in Erie has been serving the area since 1883 with a strong belief in providing customized care and doing more than just filling prescriptions. Pharmacist Morgan Bunton is now taking appointments for free consultations and sign-up assistance for Medicare Part D prescription plans that will fit your needs. Open enrollment begins October 15th and ends December 7th. Even if you're in a current plan, let Richie's help you determine if there's a better plan to cover your unique needs and prescriptions. Call or stop by Richie's today on the corner of State and Maine in Erie. Farmers Bank is a full-service bank with small-town personal attention. They know you by name and are always glad to help you out. Offering 24-hour ATM and free banking locations in St. Paul, Walnut, and Hepler, Farmers Bank, member FDIC, is proud to help support the success that a small community can achieve with teamwork and determination. Let's get back to the game on your home for St. Paul Indian Sports, Hot 105. Well, welcome back to Miles Field where the Indians come out with a nine-point victory over the undefeated, previously undefeated Burlingame Bearcats and advance to the state championship game next week versus the Hoxie Indians at 11 o'clock at Newton. So, folks, we've had the luxury of playing two games in our own home, but everybody fuel their vehicles up and get ready to roll to Newton and let's – Let's support our Indians all the way to the end. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting week in St. Paul, and it's going to be even more exciting next weekend after Thanksgiving. Everybody have a good time. Everybody come home and enjoy time with your family and, and do your best to make it out to that game next Saturday because that's going to be a big one. Mike, what do you got for stats to finish the game out in our KW Trucking postgame show? Well, we'll finish up with stats. won't take too long, but before I do that, I want to run down the scoring real quickly. That's really what the, the story of the game is with the scoring. First in the game, early in the first quarter, Burlingame set the pace with 8.17 left in the first, uh, scored the first touchdown, missed the extra point. They came back and scored again, 
and made the score 12 to nothing. They again missed the extra point, so the Indians were down by 12 at that point. But the second quarter, they came and answered the call with a brave and born to Caleb Peck of the first touchdown for 55 yards. That made the score 12 to 8 in favor of Burlingame going into halftime. So eight point game at halftime, but look out in the third quarter because the scoring just went back and forth in a crazy third quarter. Started out 46 seconds in with Burlingame on their first drive with a three yard run by Greenwood to make the score 18 to eight. Then St. Paul answered with an Adam Albertini 75 yard scamper down the field. The Colin Carlson extra point was no good. That brought the score within four at 14 to 18 to 14. St. Paul answered again with a born to peck a 20 yard 28 yard pass that put. St. Paul in the lead when the extra point was no good, put them in the lead 20 to 18. So first lead of the game, Burling game wouldn't go away though. They scored the next two touchdowns, one on a seven yard pass, the next on a five yard pass, and at that point were ahead by 14 with a score of 34 to 20. That was at the end, actually early in the third quarter, and it remained that way until 9:49 in the fourth quarter, and that got started. That's when St. Paul's offense kicked into gear. The defense stepped up. A brave and born to Caleb Peck, a 21-yard pass with a good extra point, brought it to within eight with 9.49 left. Then with four and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, Born connected with Adam Albertini for 19 to brought, tied the score when they missed the extra point at 34. That's when we had four minutes left in the ball game and it was tied up. St. Paul got the ball back after a nice defensive stop and a Colin Carlson run after a nice drive down the field. Gave St. Paul the lead for good, 40-34. to 34. And then Alejandro Mate put the icing on the cake with 11 seconds left in the game on a 27-yard field goal. Brought us to our final score, 43-34 to 34 in favor of St. Paul. Individually for St. Paul, Raven Bourne had 176 yards passing with three touchdowns on 22 attempts. He also had 16 carries on the ground for 35 yards. Colin Carlson had three carries for 22 yards and a touchdown. Adam Albertini, big night for Adam on the ground, 16 carries, 207 yards for Adam Albertini with a touchdown. He also caught a touchdown pass. He had 37 yards receiving with a touchdown. Brendan Doherty had five yards on the ground and had 12 yards receiving. Caleb Pekka, 12 12- 127 yards receiving and two touchdowns. So a lot of offense by St. Paul. Did pretty well in the second half on penalties. Only had three penalties for a total of 30 yards. So cleaned everything up. No turnovers in the second half. Well, I take that back. There was one interception in the second half from Bourne and also one in the first. So he did have two interceptions on the night. But just an overall well-put-together game, well-coached game. Coach Watcher did a heck of a job calling the plays. Called the big fourth down play again to Kate, from Bourne to Caleb Peckett like we saw last week and it's just an overall great performance tonight, something St. Paul could be proud of. Yeah, next week I'll try to keep my composure a little bit better than Oh, no, it's more fun when we get excited. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, you got to be able to understand it on the other <laughs> hand, and as long as Dan Vitch screaming, that's good for the Indians, I guess, and when everything goes silent, um, it's uh, it's a little hard for us to know what's going on, too. But either way, Indians come out with a great victory tonight. Uh, you just can't. I just can't begin to tell you how much heart the Indians showed. They've trailed two weeks in a row in the playoffs to the defending state champs Osborne last week and the undefeated Berlin game this week held their composure and twice has went on a run in the second half and in the fourth quarter to score points unanswered back-to-back. That's pretty good, Coach Watrick. <laughs> Coach Watrick down there celebrating as he should. He's got one more game to get through, a little more work to do, and and St. Paul got a chance to come home with a state championship this year. Dan. I have to tell Coach Watcher to get, get, go study some game film. That's right. Go get, get on that game field. He, over yet. he might he might be driving somewhere. <laughs> All right. So KW Trucking post game show. Mike and I is going to sign off. We'll see you next week. One more week after Thanksgiving, Saturday, eleven o'clock at Newton. I got I know for sure that's where we're playing. Because eleven o'clock at Newton. That's the state championship that's game. State championship game where the St. Paul Indians are going to play the Hawking Indians. Thanks for listening. Join us next week, 11 o'clock, pregame around 1030 at Newton. You've been listening to St. Paul Indian football. St. Paul comes out victorious as sub-state game by nine, advanced state state championship game versus Hoxie Indians next Saturday at 11 o'clock at Newton. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Dan Bitt and Mike McCracken. I want to thank Mercy back in the studio for taking care of us. We'll see you next week. Take care.